Welcome to another exciting edition of The Raven's Flock. Yeah. Welcome one, welcome all on Saturday, March 9th, as we uh, finally go th uh, go through the coziness of the warmness of spring season, which of course by Florida standards means uh, early uh, early summer. In other words, everything isn't quite burning to death, but it's kind of getting there. It's getting there. We're in a slow simmer right now. Summer. The simmer. Yeah. is boiling. Remember the summer. word simmer, people. It will be important later tonight on this program. All right. That's simmer. an Easter egg. I know. That's an Easter egg for you. All we'll just, right. We'll just let him. Talk. I'm your. I'm the host, Jose Casabona. I'm also the host of Wrestle Rewind, and I am the founder, executive producer, and content manager of this channel. We appreciate all of you tuning in tonight. And joining me on my immediate left, your right, is the host of Los Amigos Play, Mr. Angel Mendez. Hello, everyone. Thank you kindly for taking your time to join us today. It is a joy to be with you. It is a joy to have you today. And as I usually say, I hope that you enjoy being with us as much as we enjoy making this show for you. The holy light of God shines behind my head. His sacred word speaks to me. <laughs> and he saith, <laughs> blessed. <laughs> All right. Blessed I'll... and first man build. All That's right. And joining yes. me on our my Far left, your far right, is Dragon Fang Cosplay. Hi, guys. And yes, I am a lefty. <gasps> is that why you put me over here? Curse. That's why you're on the left and that I'm on the right. That's just coincidence. That's just curse. No, Jose no, does not think knew. nearly that far ahead. You knew. Curse. And, and joining us from our far right, your left, is Ayana Rose Cosplay. Hey, guys. All right. Thank you. And joining me here on my immediate right is... The host of the Black Files, my type partner for Wrestle Rewind, the man who puts it in man hours behind all the videos on this channel every single week. But how many uh, people have suffered and how many have perished in the hands of Frieza? And only he is the man who might be able to vanquish this evil. Can we do he, it? He's the legendary Super Huarian? Maybe, but tune in <laughs> to next time on Dragon Ball Z. Oh, no. The rise of Mr. Juan Arouse. <laughs> Oh, wow! <laughs> L listen, I'll, oh, you guys plan this? L listen, I'll, I'll, I'll tap y'all on the head when I'm ready. Okay? Or just Thank you. Or just <laughs> Thank you for that introduction, gentlemen. Don't you ever forget the Mister. All right, and uh, much like all our other shows on this channel, we are simulcasting on YouTube and Kick. Hit the subscribe or the follow button on the bottom right corner of your screen. Click the bell icon to enable all the notifications. Leave your questions and comments below. We'll answer as many as we can. And if you wish to go above. And beyond, to battle Frieza, I mean to be, uh, to, uh, to support this channel, then you can become an inner flocker. For $4.99 a month, you'll have exclusive access to all the perks that comes with our membership. Juan, tell them. Well, well, for all the inner flockers we've got in our chat, and I know we have plenty, go ahead and show off those lovely membership badges and custom emojis, letting everybody know that you have stepped up in order to help rescue the Raven's Flock from the clutches of late-stage capitalism be and become full-time YouTubers for your sanity, for your entertainment, and for mainly for our financial and psychological liberation. We are in dire need. Take a look at Dragon Fang. Look at her poor, poor face. Look at how poor she is. Hang on. I'm not even working next week. See? I hate it. Too is, much. It be, is it gonna be like that one commercial? Mm. Please give us a pound, or we'll have to pull the trigger. No. Dear oh, God, no. bad angel, oh, bad, no, no, bad angel. Fine, you get a gun too. Please give us a pound, or we'll have to pull. The Jesus, trigger. angel, <laughs> angel, your wings are gonna be clipped soon. They were delicious. <laughs> He's talk She's talking about neutering you. <laughs> Anyways, Juan, continue. And with your uh, with your fine support and nice uh, assistance. <laughs> the with your, fuck was that? With your, with your support, you, you can and will succeed in being able to uh, break away from our normal nine to five jobs in order to provide you guys with the amusement, entertainment, education, and liberation of the mind that you seek. You also what, get access what to members nine to first. Five job? Oh god! <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. You mean like mine? That's worse. Yes. Like even mine? worse. Nine like to, my, my, it's more like nine to four and a half hour work day. And of course, okay, you guys yeah, get we get that. You, like, I, I get it. We get it. Dragon Fang, you're un, you're unemployed. You're Jeez, underemployed. Broke. You also get access to members first and members only content. A special discount to our merch store. Link in the description below. And you also get access to us, oh, the Ravens Flock, your favorite Motley Crue nerds, here to make your voice our mission by providing us your thoughts, your input, your feedback, your ideas, and how to better shape the future of this channel to suit your tastes and needs. Hey, up there, struggler Nikki Bella. And Matthew Coburn, welcome to the Ravens Flock. We Thank you for joining you us. And as you can tell, this is a wild job we do. But it is one that we do happily and gladly. But it doesn't mean that we should do it stupidly. 
That's why we caffeinate with one of the, uh, the uh, with one of the most important drugs in the world, caffeine. Yeah, but Wancho, I don't like having caffeine in my body because what if I have to deal with like all these crazy, uncomfortable side effects? Well, you know, like Angel plugging uh, t too early than we're supposed to. You know what? You are hundred percent correct. Sometimes your eyes fail you, and you see me do things several seconds in the future because of all that nasty gas store brand garbage that they sell you. You need something better. You need something healthier. You need something cleaner, my friend. My brother in arms, you need glitch energy. There That's we go. Right. Zero, uh, zero sugar, zero carbohydrates, zero calories, and zero cr crash. In there, glitch energy is the ideal beverage to help revitalize your body physically and mentally. And whether, or whether it's from fitness or from working a nine to five or video video games for a long period of time, whatever whatever you need it for, it's all good. And what's and what's great is that with glitch energy, you're not just stuck with. Whoops, hang on, we got a little ahead there. You're not just stuck with with literally skipping ahead in time like goddamn Jesus. Kid Chris. You see what I mean? Angel is right about the time skipping, King and it's Crimson. terrible. And it it's terrible. We have no idea why it keeps happening. But uh, thankfully, with the power of glitch energy, uh, we're able to uh, get ourselves straightened out. And uh, more importantly, these guys don't just stop at at energy uh, at, at energy formulas. Like Jose was mentioning, he doesn't really do caffeine that much. It's bad for his health. So he stick he and Angel stick with the Glitch Revive brand of hydration formulas for your uh, uh, for your tasty del uh, delicious needs. And if you're looking for something a little bit more substantial. Glitch also has a, a modest line of uh, nutritional supplements. Uh, so far, they've got five in total. The in-game energy is basically the same energy blend that you get in the drinks without having to worry about drinking it. Then you have Shield, which is an immune booster. Blue Scope, which helps your eyesight. AI, which is loaded with nootropics in order for you to be able to uh, use your brain power a little bit more effectively. And God Mode, which is a natural testosterone booster in order for you to be able to get your workout on. Absolutely, and if you go on to glitchenergy.com and use our promo code FLOCKFUEL, you'll receive a 20% discount on all of your online purchases. So thank you again to Glitch Energy for partnering with the Ravens Flock. You guys made a terrible mistake and you should be ashamed of yourselves. No, they should not. They should you, not be ashamed of you know, fighting for funny. what they're You're the only one who didn't join in. Oh no, I had my thing. Nope, I... nope, oh, you didn't you join it in. Oh, you're talking about putting Sounds it on like the head. you were the only one yep. who was ashamed. Damn, Damn it, I watch. should be ashamed, but I don't uh, know anything about the word shame. Uh, but I do know Vixen's in the chat, one of the first Hello. inner flockers, eh? Hey, up there, Vixen, long this time. Balance. Hope you're doing all right there. <laughs> Take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Learn to live so free. And so free, I wish we could go. Now, unfortunately, there's no, we're not going to sugarcoat this. We love to normally sideway into something, but this, these are heavy, hard news that everybody is aware of, and as we are connoisseurs of pop culture and entertainment, we might as well talk about it now. Ladies and gentlemen, 48 hours ago, the world has been shaken because we lost not just a great, but one of the greatest creators of all time. A man whose work has defined generations of fans worldwide, brought people together in love and harmony, and taught us the important values of working hard, eating well, studying well, and resting well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have lost the creator of Dragon Ball, Mr. Akira Toriyama. That's right. Before um, we continue, though... We do have to acknowledge that Vixen, oh, one of our shit. first inner flockers, has gifted five memberships! Thank you! She gave us her energy. Wow. She gave her energy and she shared it with the rest of the world. That Holy is shit. So, amazing. You congratulations know to Nikki Bella, Matthew Coburn, Aaron Cooper, Project Metal Music, and Brandon Torres Thank on you. your Yay. gifted inner flocker memberships. Thank you so much, Victor. Nice, I appreciate nice. it. Bringing that little moment of levity to this admittedly very sad news. We yeah. did not want to believe it at first. We didn't want to believe it at first, and it took me and it caught me by surprise because on Thursday night while I was streaming Wrestle Rewind, as I was beginning the review, that's when Angel broke the news to us. And it was so hard for me to get back on track because it just happened. You always know that at one point the greatest are going to go. In fact, many of them will go before we do because they're older. But at the same time, Toriyama is one of those guys that you just can't imagine being gone because his work has been such an eternally like influencing presence in the guys the amount of crap that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Dragon Ball cannot be counted on one hand 
Like, I, I am floated with images of everything that he has experienced and continues to influence to this day. Oh, yeah, no. Listen, it's not overstating to say that the Dragon Ball Z series, and yes, we're including Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT even. Dragon Ball Super. Dragon Ball Super. The entire Dragon Ball franchise has been one of the absolute major cornerstones in the world of anime. And Akira Toriyama is responsible for the uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, its, uh, for, its, uh, for its blossoming, you know? Yeah, and wow. This guy invented the Super Saiyan because he literally didn't want to ink Goku's hair so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Some of the most amazing things that Toriyama ever did were basically, how can I work less? And I respect him infinitely for that. He based Frieza on, like, state realtors, yeah. who he considered um, to be the most evil people yeah. in the estate. world. Yeah, real estate? Real estate. <laughs> yeah. 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 When, Seriously? When yeah. he started writing that part of Dragon Ball Z, like his fam uh, like Japan was going through some bad juju because it was based on the that time when the economy bubble popped and suddenly properties became stupidly expensive. So basically, state realtors became the equivalent of loan sharks and mafiosos into one. So that's why Frieza's entire business is wiping out planets and selling them back. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> You didn't know that? No, I didn't know I, that. Well, I, I didn't, know that, didn't know that either. And now you're you know. Shit. You're shitting me. And of Wait, course. Why'd you never share it with me? Because I thought you knew. No. <laughs> and of course, obviously, Dragon Ball is not the one big thing he worked in. He's just one of the biggest. He also is responsible for the iconic art style of the well-known and well-loved RPG series Dragon, Dragon Quest. Quest. A series so famous that in Japan, people straight up take days off just to play the new yes. game whenever it comes out. It's insane. This man has done so much, not just for the industry, but for the sake of, ironically, humanity itself. I dare say Toriyama has ended more racism by himself than any government ever has in his entire life. And what? you know what the sad thing is? What? What? His age, 68, is not Alas. that old. Yeah, it isn't. Alas, he did pass away far younger than he should. To We don't know the exact cause, but apparently it was for trauma caused by what seemed to be a head injury. Well, we do have an article that will provide more information on this. In a, an article provided by CBS News, and Juan will share that link in the live chat. Headline the headline read. reads, Akira Toriyama, creator of Dragon Ball series and other popular anime, dies at 68. Damn. Yeah, uh, this was heart wrenching over here. I can't read who the hell wrote this thing. Um, yeah, I don't see a name. Okay, whatever. Well, just try to zoom in as best you can. No, I'm not gonna zoom in. Fine. What? You want me to zoom in here? I I'm genuinely gonna... cannot see the title. Like I don't the see a name. I don't see a name. I don't see one either. It was written no, there by is no name. at the same time. There okay. is no name. Okay, yeah. that's fine. All okay, right. here we go. Akira. To yep. Akira Toriyama, the creator of the best-selling Dragon Ball and other popular anime who influenced Japanese comics, has died. His studio said Friday he was only 68. Toriyama's Dragon Ball uh, manga series, which st started in 1984, has sold millions of copies globally and was adapted into hugely popular animated TV shows, video games, and films. Toriyama died March 1st uh, of a blood clot in his brain, oh. Bird Studio said in a statement. This was working. Uh, uh, he was uh, quote. He was working enthusiastically on many projects, and there was still much he was looking forward to accomplishing. Man, this is how you uh, know that this man was was beloved. Okay, that was covered on uh, Dra uh, Dragon Balls. Uh, that was covered by the BBC as well. Uh, here's the news article for you guys. What about Blue Dragon? Who? Honestly, wow. I didn't hate the game. It was alright. The and plot just wasn't that interesting. A blood clot in the brain. Yeah, they actually you cause... You cannot recover from that. Apparently, the cause yeah. implies, that, uh, for what they said, uh, it has to do with something caused by head injury, so nobody knows if it was an accident or caused by an illness. But either way, is yet another cruel indictment of the sheer brutal conditions that mangaka, even the most famous ones, subject themselves just to deliver product time and time and time again. And suddenly that's something that we saw a few years ago with Mr. Miura, who passed away before he could complete his own masterpiece, Berserk. <sighs> who his friend is still continuing in his honor. God bless that man. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, once again, we have been... T it's a, a, an incredible man has been taken from us far too soon. Absolutely. And me and, and me and Juan, we were able to share our thoughts on this matter on Akira Toriyama Thursday night on Wrestle Rewind. But right now, we're, before we get to everyone else's uh, uh, um, uh, thoughts on this, we're going to open the floor for Angel Mendez, Ziana Rose, and Dragon Fang to share their thoughts on Akira Toriyama. Oh boy, uh, it's only fair. Can I go last? I I, I gotta build on my thing over here. Okay, so Zayana, Dragon Fang, which you all want to go? So basically, we our fondest memory of Dragon Ball was at our old house, our childhood house. We didn't want to 
<laughs> we, we laugh at this because we didn't no. want to actually our eat dinner. <laughs> our <laughs> at the dining table. Our grandparents were very pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> All the, it, it happened but, every single day. Every but, single week. but we had our own... Our own Our little, little table, table. Out in the back room. So they moved the table out there, and we had mac and cheese and chocolate milk almost every single freaking night. And we watched Dragon Ball. We'll be, they'll be like, okay, why don't you eat dinner at the dinner table? Like, no, no Dragon, Dragon Ball's on! Dragon Ball's on! Dragon Ball's we have, on. To, we watch have to watch it! We have to see what happens yes. next! Yeah, Are they still on that planet? Namek, yes, they're still on Namek! <laughs> and our own. Our, our grandpa would just come out and he's like, you're still watching? And we're like, yes! Yeah. yes! We need to see what happens next on Dragon Ball Z. Next stop and, and then the next on thing, Dragon then, Ball Z. And then the Z. next thing was Dragon Ball Z. So we're like, no, we still have to watch more. Yeah. They're like, get back there. Like, no, no, no. no. We're, do you, we're do you guys want, like, it's like, okay, do you guys want ice cream? Yeah, and then we're going to watch some more Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was basically our night, our, our <laughs> nightly routine during the week. God. Yeah, so it's we like were, we, we were, always we were keep totally saying not addicted. we love doing. We, we loved. We were not that. addicted to watching it. Yeah, no. Like, we. It I mean, that good. Can I really be called back? I mean, <laughs> also considering the fact that this was also before you could actually uh, watch them all online. Uh, yes. So we actually there was no way to no, watch it other exactly. than on TV. And so we. We and YouTube wasn't down. even a thing. Yeah, so we actually had work. we had like several pieces of paper, and whenever we watch an episode, we, would we write it down. If we didn't watch it, we would write it down so we know which ones we watched. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah. The world was a different place <laughs> yes, then. It was. We used to be a real country. But yeah, like we we love Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z we so freaking much. We still want to. Hey up there, we, Ben Cruz, by the way. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Ben. We actually, we still want to uh, cosplay as um, Trunks and. Because I was gonna be Trunks and Goat, yes. Goat and, and we want to, we want to do we want to do the fusion yes. dance together. Well, I could see that working. <laughs> yes, you're, you're in, you're in I want. You I was gonna, gonna, gonna be Trunks. <laughs> yes. And I was gonna be. Oh God, that. Okay, now we gotta Here. make this happen. I want to cosplay. I, I, I would like Here. to cosplay as Piccolo. Oh God, I'm yes. gonna stab someone with the, the hair. best dad. Wait, you yes. want to cosplay as Piccolo? You could yes. do it. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Really? Do it. Why not? Okay, challenge. Green makeup. Yeah, what's your point? That's insensitive, green. Joe. That's green face. <laughs> Wancho, you were testing. You were using me as a t as a, as your guinea pig for ultra uh, for Listen, ultra. Don't even try that. That would have been white face. That would have been worse. <laughs> true. I'm not ready to. I'm not ready to shrink down to size to be freeze. Yeah, that's true. Because they would have. Like we would have to take. Hey, 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 no, no, we would no, have like, to. We I would have to. No, to, no. We have a friend who can do that. We can have a friend I, who does freeze. I, I, I got a joke for you. Put the ice cream in the freezer. Oh my god. Please, uh, Wait, no, you can just be his dad instead. Lord. All right. Lord Please Freeze. make it happen. We could do a photo shoot, says Ben Cruz. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Struggler. I we remember know watching. how to do the dance, too. Yes, we do. We got to practice. I remember watching DBZ with Sailor Moon and Samurai oh Pizza god, Cats yes. before school. It was still great. Yes. 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 Samurai yes. Pizza Cats. Okay, here's the yes. thing. This is how you get children to wake up early. No, guys, this is how you get children to wake up early. Yeah. By having these freaking things in the morning, Listen. and we're like, I remember, I watching, like, I remember watching Pokemon yep. before going to school. All the alarms in the Moon. world couldn't wake me up, but that guitar riff. Yes. Da, 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 I remember me and Juan was stayed up late night watching Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, we we that stayed was up. Back on we we stayed oh, up yes. late uh, for something else, and we always got caught. Yeah, right. Inuyasha. 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 Um, yeah. Night. All right, Angel. We okay, come to so you, man. My experience with Dragon Ball was actually somewhat schizophrenic because in Cuba there is not that much TV. The best we can get is when they show animated movies on Sunday mornings. That's called the Sunday matinee. Yep. So the first thing I saw of Dragon Ball was the movie Tree of Might. I had no idea what the hell was going on. I didn't know who anyone was or why anybody was fighting until they started explaining the motivations or why the bad guy looked just like the main bad good guy or what Aww. the fuck is an Amekian <laughs> or why is the tree so important. <laughs> but I did know one thing though, that fruit looked goddamn delicious. <laughs> <laughs> when he took a bite of that thing and you just hear that satisfying crunch and I'm like, oh yeah, that's worth killing a whole city for. That's worth killing a whole planet so, for. I didn't think much of it at that point because I was like, Seven and I'm like, yeah, okay, no, that was a fun animated movie. Then one year later, a friend of mine, Eduardito, bless his soul, I don't know if he's still alive, got his hands on an old VHS tape that his parents sent him from like, like Spain or something, and he put That's it on. That's how you know it's badass, and man. The you first, get the VHS tape, oh, man. The first thing I see is a blonde guy about to fight a pink dude, mm -hmm. and the blonde guy becomes both a blonde guy with really long hair. Yes! 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 
and Super one, Saiyan because three. Super Saiyan three, what yes. follows is and like you know a seven best. episode fight of blonde guy yes. and pink guy beating the living shit yes. out of each other. Yep. Well, there's I'm another Dragon blonde Ball guy in the you. corner going, Kakarot, you really are the best, <laughs> and I'm like. And Kakarot is, you know, Kakarot. this is the coolest shit I ever seen in my life. Yeah. So, as you can imagine, I hooked onto that with like the grace of a dying man in the desert. But unfortunately, there was not much information to me. I just knew what it was called and the characters based on what I got there. So then I get to this country many years later and they start showing Dragon Ball on Toonami from the start that day. And then you know it's all because they got Peter Cohen doing the, the trailer yes. narration. And I'm like, oh, Dragon <laughs> so Ball that's where this came from. And I watched the whole thing and from yeah. beginning to end. Cultural yes. enrichment of the highest I order. I receive enrichment from the year 2003. And then wonderful. I, wow, I've been in this country for like fucking 22 years. Jesus Christ. Isn't Damn. that wonderful? <laughs> nice. But point in case is, I began somewhat disjointed. But the impact that that show had on me... It defined the things that I was going to love in anime for the rest of my life. Then after that, you know, I started watching other stuff with differentiating. But the moment that I, an ignorant eight-year-old child, sat down and saw big blonde man become bigger, blonder, or manner. <laughs> Musclier. Musclier man. And got into a fight with super stretchy man. And I'm like, this oh, is fucking God. awesome. And they started shooting balls at each other. And I'm like, this is the greatest thing i ever seen in my life. It was a life-defining moment. And, you know, as you get older, you realize, oh, wow, this kind of stuff is everywhere. This dude has influenced so much. Mm -hmm. You cannot help but to love it to the point that, okay, I will be the first one to complain about Dragon Ball Super. I okay. have my beef with it. <laughs> the animation it. was kind of crap, and the story was like a weaker <laughs> version of the self against whatever. Down. But it doesn't matter. You know why? Because on episode two, uh, 110, when <laughs> Ultra Instinct first shows up, Everybody dun, was dun, losing their dun, goddamn dun, dun, minds. Dun, 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 and dun, when episode dun. 130 comes around and the governments of several South American countries go, yeah, we're going to ignore that request from Japan. We're just going to stream this for thousands of people to watch. And you have every person of every color in the rainbow screaming, Goku! 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 Ah! That's so beautiful! That's so that, was really cool. that shit united people in a way no other media empire has ever done. Mexico had posters on the streets advertising the final match like it was a football game. The government of Mexico literally stopped working and they went, nobody's working today everybody go watch dragon ball yeah. super <laughs> oh my god do you have any idea the amount of influence you have to have in the world to have entire countries go hold on everybody i know we're busy with politics but goku is about to fight jiren i gotta watch it. it's like yeah <laughs> wait goku's gonna fight jiren oh okay uh session is adjourned for the day everybody get the hell home <laughs> Who's that guy? Who's that guy, please? I got, I got, I got it right here. Sir, I have a dead sentence. You get to live one more day. You gotta watch this. <laughs> like, your, 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 your sentence is commuted for uh, uh, 48 hours. 40, 40 hours, yeah. Just, just imagine the hardest, most bloodthirsty cartels getting together. Guns at the, in one hand and Cerveza in the other, looking at each other like, one day of peace. One day of peace. One Un day. dia de paz. Yeah. Porto Riyama, Porto Riyama. Okay. And okay. you know what? Angel does have a point. That's how freaking awesome and influential the entire Dragon Ball franchise is. It's so huge. It's so, like, I'm trying to find the right words for it. Transcendental. Transcendental, Goku yes. is no longer a fictional character. He has become a saint, like an mm -hmm. icon to people. I Goku's mean, real. What are you talking about? Goku's was, real. He was in the Olympics. Remember? Listen, all I know is that if you go to a South American country and you see a picture of Goku on the side of a food truck, that food is going to be the bomb. It's going to be the thing. And yeah, no, how many different people or different entertainment venues or everywhere were inspired by Dragon Ball Z in some way, shape, or Not form? Not just Z, but Dragon Ball I mean, but literally, the Dragon Ball series the Dragon is Ball in a lot. Literally Dragon Ball more than we can count. Okay. We could start making examples and we could do like a whole episode of Sonic. Uh, <laughs> the whole Sonic franchise, like, it's Super Sonic exists because of Monster yeah, Hunter, yep. Ray Jang. Yep. Ray Fury is raging. The Powerpuff Girls had freaking stuff. Powerpuff in it. Girls. It yeah. was just the when Goku the, does wait, and boom dodge. explosion. Boom. Was that Goku or was that Trunks? I don't remember. Hell, oh, WWE's, God, uh, WWE's popular incredible. faction, the New Day, they came dressed up in Super Saiyan gear during a Fucking match at WrestleMania. Nerds. Yeah, they fell out of a gigantic bowl Wait. box of cereal, and they were dressed up as uh, the, as the Frieza minions. They were doing the no, Ginyu they were Force. doing the Ginyu Force stuff. Oh my Ginyu god, Force. Oh my god the Ginyu, Ginyu Force! The amount of inspirations and shoutouts that they get, Toku Senta Ginyu oh. Force has ever had, are so, genuinely staggering. So, when is the Olympics oh, yeah. going to go back it, to Japan? Because uh, 
Wouldn't you think they would have Goku in there? That's not. Yes. By the way, you it's not so? Goku. It's Gohan. Yeah. Oh, it's yes. Gohan. Okay. Go- yeah. I cannot what, remember. It's been so long since I watched no, that one. No, that's Gohan doing the dodging. No, that's that's Trunks. Oh yeah, no, that is Trunks. Trunks? That's, yeah. What he, that's when he comes back to fight the androids and proceeds yeah. to deliver. Oh hands. yeah, he, that's. Oh yeah, you're making it worse. It's insane how many shows. Since we gotta rewatch all of it. All Fortnite. Dragon Ball, all Dragon Ball Z, Fortnite. let's go. Uh, the let's Dragon go. Ball from game, the beginning. The Dragon Ball beginning. game, Kakarot, has a DLC that lets you play that section. Mm-hmm. They add a little more to the scene. After oh. he wipes out 18 and he knocks 17 to the ground, 17 looks up and he sees Trunks charging the beam. And for a moment, his image is superimposed with Gohan's image. Ah! Oh, like oh hey, remember oh, yeah. me, asshole? Remember my teacher who you murdered? Oh, what was great. his name again? Tell me his name and I'll let you live. Uh, 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 James? <laughs> Goku, Goku, Jr.? Goku Jr.? Goku Jr.? Wrong, Wrong answer. answer. <laughs> oh, no, he like, we wouldn't have, have Team Four Star! Oh my god, if bless, it weren't for this, we wouldn't team have a bridged star. series! God dang it. Cute. Psh, bitch, I'm adorable. <laughs> <laughs> but point in oh, case is, his influence is felt in almost everything. Many of the things that you love, just like in Berserk, mm-hmm. like anytime you see Scar dramatic swordsmen with big fuck off so- Cloud Strife. Cloud Strife. Mm-hmm. Final PS1, Fantasy. Final PS1. Fantasy 7 Rebirth. You're playing as... Not even Rebirth, the original. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Purple playing- uniform. Brown boots. Yellow spike. It's literally Gohan during the it's- Cell Saga. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Holy like shit. Everything that almost everything that you love oh, or you yeah. think of down, has been influenced That's by Dragon Ball. That one song. Which song? Which one? There's that a... one song. I I forget the Chala. No, no, no. It's Chala. one where like literally oh. everyone starts fighting each other. What was that called again? Uh, uh, what? I don't know. Uh, ultimate, ultimate showdown. Ultimate showdown. Ultimate 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 yes, thank God. This is the ultimate yes. showdown yes. of ultimate destiny. Yeah, Good Marvel. guys, bad guys, and explosions. Yeah. As, as far as the eye can, can see. see. And only oh one God. will survive. I wonder who it will be. This is the ultimate showdown. That song, yes. Of course. Ultimate destiny. It wasn't just pop culture that was influenced by Toriyama's work. The fact that many mangas themselves took inspiration from him. Mm-hmm. Needless to say, if it wasn't for the popularity that Dragon Ball brought to the States, One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, and many, many others would have never made it here. In fact, mm-hmm. even though it wasn't directly inspired by it, Kubo owes his entire work play, uh, mm-hmm. career to Toriyama because after his previous manga, Zombie Powder, was cancelled, his new manga, Bleach, was rejected, mm-hmm. and Toriyama was the one that went, hold up, this guy's cooking something. He put in a good word for him, and it was thanks to him that Bleach even exists. Yep. And okay. it is to say, of course, One Piece, Naruto, and God, the sheer amount of shonen anime and manga that have been inspired yep. by Ooh, yeah. Dragon Ball, or Z, or GT, or Super in general, cannot be counted. The number goes beyond anything I can imagine. Needless to say that, the, honestly, it'll be easier to find the mangas that were not, in some way, shape, or form, inspired by Dragon Ball. That's right, Angel. And, yeah, no, um, speaking of influence, there are several folks on uh, on Twitter, on social media, that have, uh, th- well, people on Twitter that took to Twitter to voice their uh, thoughts and their support and their, you know, for instance, uh, their, their, their ovation for Akira Toriyama. For instance, uh, the Anime News Network uh, got this little video courtesy of Stephen um, Weird, Weirdy over here. Yeah, they they put out this loving tribute over here to Mr. Toriyama-san. Yep. Oh yeah, also- Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Chrono Trigger and Blue Dragon. Generation, like look Man. at everything he's touched. The more, the, how much he's done without even meaning to. That's beautiful. That's really awesome. Since this is like a big dream, may heaven be a joyous. Wo- ah, damn it. Man. I'm in pain now. Uh. Pain. Suffering even. Despair, Let's, let's if not you forget will. that the most base Japanese grandma ever, the voice actress of Goku, mm-hmm. recalls that when she spoke with Toriyama the first time, he told her, you will take good care of Goku, right? And she replied, as long as I have energy in my body, I will. Oh. Oh, like, here, my mind is blank right now. Even so, I think please back to Toriyama-sensei it, the, telling me, please take care of uh, good care of Goku. There she is. The, 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 the greatest voice. grandma sensei, ever. please watch over us from above by Masako Nozawa, Damn. the voice of Goku. Well, in guys, Japan. remember now. Now Man. he has that halo. He has that halo now. Yeah, he has the halo for real. Mm-hmm. Yo, oh my God, man! Now he's here. God, I love Boo. I love Boo. Man. Man. Oh, that's dope. Man. 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 Yeah. 
That's the good shit right there. That's the good shit. Listen, oh, take your soap berry writing and shove it up your ass. The main character is about to scream really loud right now, okay? That's the only thing that matters. And, of course, the fact that he, the creations that he inspired went on to inspire other series. He's like the grandfather of modern shonen. Mm -hmm. He's not just a celebrity. He's a creator. There's this really funny uh, edit. Of, you guys know the original picture of Naruto that is Kakashi holding the three team members. Yeah. Somebody edited that to make Goku holding Ichigo, Naruto, and Luffy together oh, as a Luffy. team. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And somebody cute. went further and made another one with because Ichigo. Yeah, as a, a father holding Tanjiro, uh, Yuji, Tadori, and uh, Asta from uh, Black Clover, who were all heavily inspired by Dragon Ball and oh, by Bleach. The so, fact that Ichigo is actually a dad now makes it all like extra funny. It's like like he's the big brother, but no, now he is a dad, and it makes now, it even better. Like, man, those legacies. kids are gonna be great. Yeah, that that takes us back. I'll see you down the road. Uh, 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 all right there, uh, uh, all right there, Luffy. Yeah, save me a bowl of ramen while you're at it. And they're walking away, and you see the little photo of the three of them. Yeah, uh, with uh, Goku, like this big <laughs> fucking oh God, the new kids. Yeah, they're gonna be all right. They're gonna be yeah. all right, they're man. Good so yeah. yeah, okay. Like this is how. Crazy crazy it is let me show you guys i i actually got this translated over thanks to uh someone else the ministry of foreign affairs in japan uh, more is mr akira no, toriyama china. China. i'm in in china yeah. china jesus jumped up christ so i actually found this thing called easy dubs bot so uh this is what they literally say here please pardon the translation is not perfect oh no it's perfect it's just inaudible Oh, damn. We express our deep condolences for the passing of Mr. Akira Toriyama and express our sincere condolences to his family. Mr. Toriyama is a famous cartoonist. His works are also very popular in China. I noticed that many Chinese netizens also express condolences for his death. We hope and believe that more knowledgeable people in Japan will actively participate in Sino-Japanese cultural exchanges and the cause of friendship between the two. Damn. That's so sad. Oh we hope you guys were able to hear it. Oh, it, makes, yeah, it, it makes perfect sense when you remember that Dragon Ball is an adaptation of one of the most well-known Chinese myths, Journey to the West. Yep. The fact that the man decided, yep. okay, I'm done with Journey to the West, aliens, and still managed to make it good, and catapult the series even further in popularity, is extraordinary. Dear Jesus, check this. El the, Salvador. The nation of El Salvador had oh. made a, de a declaration of nationwide mourning for Akira Toriyama. And I do not know what struggle legacy you could aspire to as an artist. Uh, that several governments actually would, uh, uh, and actual world leaders on multiple different continents, commemorate you in this like, fashion. That is crazy. That's insane. Man. This man now, is getting more decorations than war heroes. That's now, how influential he was. He's now, helped solve world peace. Comunicación okay. de presa. The Angel government of El Salvador, in uh, name of the Ministry of Relationships of External Relationships with great sadness is now united in uh, mourning for the loss and in, in, in recognition of the artist Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball. And uh, sorry, a little closer, please. Okay, give me a second. Let me uh, see if I can zoom that in a little more. Okay. Really? Oh, oh come on! It's, it's what the hell is that? This is a cruel <laughs> joke. It's okay. I'll try to get it from here. Uh, put it back in the previous screen. There, there we go. go. Before this irreparable loss, our nation recognizes the invaluable contributions that Toriyama has done to the world of manga and, co and popular culture. Uh, his, his iconic works have marked uh, various generations of Salvador Angels and inspire many artists, captivating millions of readers and television writers throughout the world. His legacy will endure in the hearts of his fans and in the history of manga. We extend our sincerest condolences to his family, his friends, and the entire country and the people of Japan. God oh. damn, man! Dude, damn, dude. That man has done more for world peace than anyone else could just by inventing Dragon Ball. This is insane. Like, this is how much... The Smurfs! Damn. Oh. Oh, like, we want to help you, but we have no Dragon Balls hidden in our village. Damn it. Oh. You know, there is something bittersweet about the fact that the last thing he worked on was Dragon Ball Daima, which is a more lighthearted adventure of Goku and his friends turning into children and going in adventures throughout the world. So we have kind of gone full circle in a way. <laughs> And well, you mentioned Sonic over here. Get a load of this. Sonic. Actor Ben Schwartz, the guy who voiced Sonic the Hedgehog in the Sonic movie franchise, went, uh, went on Twitter to share his thoughts on the passing of Akira Toriyama. 
Akira Toriyama was a legend. Chrono Trigger is quite possibly my favorite video game of all time, and Dragon Quest was one of the first RPGs I had ever played. A huge loss to gaming and anime. What an incredible and inspiring career. That was the man. He was the man! He was the he man! He was the man. He was the man's man. He was uh, the man for real. <sighs> God almighty. It's truly a shame that he had to go so... And unfortunately, yeah, in this decade, we have lost a lot of really good artists and mm -hmm. famous people as It's a Gundam shows here. In 2021, to, to illness and bad health, we lost Miura Kentaro from Berserk. Yeah, then in 2022, Taski, uh, Takahashi Katsuki yeah, heroically was... sacrificed his life to save a bunch of drowning people, but... It was actually a drowning child because their yeah. dad couldn't get in and the kid was caught in a riptide. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Unfortunately, the riptide took him instead. Then a bit later, in 2023, we lost Terasawa Buichi, who made Cobra spit... Oh! Mm -hmm. The amount of shit Cobra has inspired... Okay, let me put it this way. There would not be Han Solo if it wasn't for this guy. Oh, really? Jesus, seriously? He was around before that? Cobra was the ori one of the originals, smart-talking, high-flying, lady on every hand, gun on my hip, badass space so, mercenary. So, freaking, uh, what's his face? Uh, from, you know, Cowboy Bebop, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Before Cowboy Bebop, there was, there was space Cobra. Cobra. You know also, what? his arm was a gun. You know something, guys? It's so awesome and it's so um, wholesome to see the entire world unify and show their love and appreciation for Akira Toriyama. And he definitely deserves it for all that he has accomplished just by bringing us the Dragon Ball franchise and, and expanding on his work and expanding on his art. It um, even helps bring people forward who really don't need to say anything. Uh, for instance, uh, <laughs> Justin Chatwin, the, gentleman, the, the guy who... Regrettably, played Goku in Dragon Ball Evolution, the attempted live-action adaptation. What? It was so yeah. bad that he gave us super, so thanks? Justin Chatwood, who played Goku, uh, reacts to Toriyama passing. Rest in peace, brother, and sorry we messed up the adaptation so badly. Okay, if anybody doesn't have to apologize for that, it's him. He was just an actor. Yeah, The yeah, writers and the directors writers. are the ones that need to get down on their knees and bow down. Because yeah. that movie was so bad that oh. Toriyama came out of retirement to make Super. It oh. was so bad that James Marston, the guy who plays Spike in Buffy. The guy who, who played Piccolo. Who played in Piccolo, Dragon Ball Evolution. He was so movie. disappointed that he... I talked to him about this. He talked to... Uh, Chris, uh, the, the voice of uh, Vegeta. Chris Sabat. Chris Sabat going, listen, just give me a rolling super. I don't care what it is. Even if it's a cameo, please, anything. Yeah. And he got one of the best bad guys in super. He got to play Zamazu, the, the, the genocidal Shit. misandrist. Sorry, the, the genocidal guy who just wants to kill all humans because he fears their power. <laughs> How dare you step up to a god, punk. That's <laughs> actually pretty dope, but that's a good turnaround for James Mar uh, Mar Mar Marsden. Marsden. Marston. Mar yeah, James Marsters. Yeah, no, you had it right. My bad. James All right. Marsters. So let's. So and, and of course, there's going to be assholes. Oh, yeah, baby. Unfortunately, Major assholes. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Toriyama's past, the news of Toriyama's past, he does not negate it from assholes sharing their thoughts the on The fact Twitter. that they feel the time to speak is now, right after they yeah. find the death, means that they're not just assholes, they are cowards. Because listen, I will complain about Dragon Ball and Super and the flaws that I find on it every goddamn day. I love them, but I know they're not perfect. All right, well, before we get into our rants, let's actually read out what yeah. this yeah. tweet says. But then we got pricks like this. Okay, thankfully we have O'Shea Jackson Jr. You may remember he's the son of Ice Cube, so this guy is based. You're right, Jackson. All right, right. Let's read All the right. original tweet from Sakamoto. The tweet... At, uh, yeah, at Sakagoto Days. The tweet reads this, and I quote, Toriyama did not create, invent, or revolutionize anime or manga. Wow. Stop giving that man credit for everything. My favorite series would have existed with or without him. Rest in peace to him, but stop hyping that MF up. Thank you. Togashi is the actual goat. God bless. Togashi invented Hunter Hunter. Guess what Hunter Hunter was inspired by? It was inspired yeah. by Dragon Ball, you freaking plebeian! The cover yeah. of the first volume of Hunter Hunter is a blatant shout out to the cover of Goku catching a big fish. You know, a little bit of research and Imbecile. due diligence might have done you some well, uh, might have done you some help there, Sakamoto. Check it, check it. O'Shea Jackson. I have no words. I, I'm literally just. By the way, Fuck. his other favorite series, Sakamoto Days, is a slice of life story about a retired mafioso who can do insane, physics defying feats of violence to protect his peaceful life. Guess what? That was inspiring. I wonder what. I wonder. I wonder what. 
Probably <laughs> Dragon Ball. Yeah, nah. That to, was like, to which O'Shea Jackson, who shared this, he called this motherfucker out. I've never seen such weak behavior. He deleted his account. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't seen the video of Togashi speaking so highly of Toriyama, it only makes this post the dumbest in anime community history. Uh, he didn't do wow. that. Wow. Check your facts before Check you Check yourself. Stuff like this, is like looking, oh. this is like looking at the founding fathers about to sign the Declaration of Independence and go, ah, eh, whatever. What did they do? Okay, listen. Like, everybody. Bruh. Okay, like, listen. Who did they ever beat? The British Empire, maybe? Oh, okay, so let's so let's get this out of the way. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. They're allowed to share their Correct. opinions on social media. That's fine and all dandy. And I will always stand, and whether I agree with their opinions or not, I will stand by their right to st take this opinion. But this was incredibly ill-advised. From Sakamoto. That's, and that is the and that's me. That's, that's the that's, nicest. That's being very that's generous. Being very generous Jose. You're being too Listen, kind. Joe, you respect their opinion. You have forgiven them, but the entire state the entire fucking continent of South America won't. Oh no, I haven't said I forgive them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, I see, never said no, they, they see, didn't see, delete their account. I'm pointing out the I'm, cartels got to them. I'm pointing out how in how short sighted and ill advised this tweet it was. Mm. And, and you know what? He and this yeah, dude, actions chasing. have consequences. Come on, man. Over here. This is the cloudest of chasings. And um, boy, oh boy, yes. Unfortunately, there have been a few bad apples in every batch. And there has been a share of people. As, but we are not showing those here because, God, they are stupid. My personal oh. favorite is the ones that are still accusing Toriyama of racism for the victim, Mr. Popo. Oh, like this peon like over this here. Prick By the from... way, thank you, Zayana Rose and Dragon Fang, for thank sharing so this much. one. Oh, because boy. this person... This Oh, yep, this person. Yep. Let's talk about Sweet Baby Ink again. Yep. Just one again. more time. <laughs> Listen, you know, before we get into that, I will just say it's only because we talked about Sweet Baby Ink that I recognize yes. this. I was like, Sweet Baby Ink employee does this. I'm like, did Wait, we just talk now? about this? What was this? What? Are you kidding me? So I'm like, so they are never the racist allegations, are they? They cannot beat the racist allegations Never. anymore. Ever. Before this particular <gasps> punk, there was unfortunately more than one person. In this case, is Mr. Chris Kindred at its Kindred saying, hang on, what is he saying? Toriyama gave us the best and worst black characters in anime in the same series. It took range to do that. Oh my fucking god. Wow. And this person did not did even 24, 24 hours, hours after his yep. death was announced. And rightfully so, this cowardly sack of shit went ahead and privated their own ass. Of course ads. they yeah, did. Because I went yeah. to try and fact check. And yeah. what do you went know? Private. I went on Twitter. I typed it in. This can only be seen by people approved for him following. I'm like, bitch yeah. made. So and screenshot. Bitch hey, look, so I can't even see this. For the record, let us apply some proper context. Toriyama had. A Two specific black representations that drew some controversy. The first one is Mr. Popo, who is not, in fact, a shout out to black people. He's based on two original depictions of genies in mm -hmm. their mythology, the Arabian Nights. You and mean, oh, this man right yes. here. Yes. Mr. Second? Popo. And the second oh my God, is I a love... specific, uh, I don't know the name, I think oh, it's called oh. Mahara or something. It's a specific deity of Hindu origin that oh. looks exactly like Mr. Popo. Shiny black mm -hmm. skin, bloody red lips, white clothing and turban. He's supposed yep. to be like a guardian that is supposed, supposed to guide travelers. He's supposed to be travelers. a jinn. Yeah, kind he's based on Except... real genies. Yeah. yeah. Genies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So no, he's not a representation of black people. He's just a dude that is really black. The he's other just one, a dude who's, he's a mythical freaking creature. Yeah. He he's got elf ears. He's got and elf as, ears. And as he's a, not a black person. He's got elf ears. He's he's got, he's living in the sky with yeah. with, with a gr old green slug man. Sorry, go on. I didn't no, no, I was just gonna say, yo, no. Angel's right. It has nothing to do with race. It was it was a character based on you know historical cultural references. Yep. So yeah, Toriyama was very accurate in his in the portrayal of Mr. Popo. Thank you very much. By yes. as accurate as he could get with a mythological being. The second one is Mr. Black, one of the antagonists of the Red Ribbon Army Act. One could argue that his uh, like his representation was somewhat racist with a big old red lips. But that was the only time he ever showed a, a person like that. And as the years went on and he refined his style, he never used that representation again. So at worst, you could say that that was basically for the time. Because Japan isn't exactly abreast of the sensitivity issues going on in America in 1980 or something. So you could say that that representation was not exactly accurate. But at the same time, you can re can you really call him racist for drawing the same way everybody was drawing black people during those times? And, and more, he more changed over to almost the, immediately. Moreover to the point, like you said, the, the, like you said, it, 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 in the early 80s, Japan wasn't exactly all that into American zeitgeist stuff. So, yeah. yeah I would like really... to see him that the fact that he made Mr. Black the one member of the Red Ribbon Army with common sense would mean that he's not exactly trying to portray an, an intentionally offensive depiction of the character. And if that's a problem, look at the black people that he made after. 
Yeah, I don't Every know you, but he seems pretty damn perfectly good. Perfectly fine. So the point to all this is, is that there is no racial inclination to any of the characters portrayed in the Dragon Ball franchise. Call uh, that. Yeah. All I'm so, saying is, nobody had a problem with Mr. Popo for the last few decades until some dumbass decided that they had it. to be all morally righteous about his work. You know what? Don't disrespect Mr. Popo. He was crucial in training Goku back in the heyday before he was ready for the first world tournament. We he love he him. He Popo. ate a Kamehameha. He, was he, introduced us to the, <laughs> he introduced us to the hyperbolic time chamber. No, 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 honestly, like, I'm pretty serious aside, Mr. Popo is one of the series' kindness, most nice characters, and I will rain hell on anybody that talks shit about Mr. Popo. He Dende. was the man! Also, Dende, Dende is a precious baby. Dende's, Dende's cool. Dende's go- I love it. Dende also, was a little sweet. Poor oh, Dende, wait. the shit that kid had to go. He smart so corn, red, Dende. and nearly got... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, so I guess the point to all this is, for this latter half of the story, is that, yes, you are allowed to voice your opinions, but when it comes to someone who just recently passed away, listen... If you have nothing nice to say about that person, then don't say shit. Don't say anything yeah. at all. That's also let, the fact that what they're let saying. Let people mourn, for goodness sake. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's also the fact that they're clearly saying this to gather attention and keep people away from the for fact clout. that they keep shitting on them. Mm-hmm. By the way, for the record, another person somewhat disconnected from this, another member of Sweet Baby Inc., who has been basically going out of her way to get into fights with everybody on Twitter, tried to fake a death threat. And when people asked them, uh, please show receipts of this death threat, they completely refused and blocked the account. And I'm like... Like, what's your source? Trust me, bro. Because of course they did. Yeah, and uh, by the way, that same person got into a fight with uh, another Twitter user called Grums, who basically called them out on the fact that they are trying to stir controversy to hide people away from the fact that they are doing shitty localization work. And when she called them out, she goes, oh, please, what's your day job? And he just didn't answer because people went, imagine telling that to the guy who invented World of Warcraft. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, please, what's your day job? Wow. Uh, let's see. I invented one of the most popular and successful Successful Here, MMORPGs of all time. So yes, yeah, like let me give you a list. list. Sweet yeah, exactly. baby yeah. ink collecting L's, but unfortunately it wasn't your them. Few and far in between, but there have been people that basically have decided that now that Mr. Toriyama has passed away, it's the perfect time to come out swinging from the branches and, and start screaming about racism. Well, I thank you, thank you for co- uh, thank you for that uh, nice, beautiful reminder of how disgusting and how inappropriate you are on social media. You hold a special permanent place in internet dishonor. You're going to hilf. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Heffel. Heffel. You're the going home to for infinite losers. Uh, kind of tired of bitches talking crap when people can't defend themselves. Yeah, yeah. they always want until oh, they're yeah. dead. Mr. Black was an awesome character. That's Mr. Popa disrespect. He outsmarted uh, corn red and nearly got away from Goku. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. they. Yeah. they Project Metal Music, hey, up there, buddy. Welcome to the Ravens Flock. We appreciate you. Join us as we celebrate the life and times of Akira Toriyama here. And God Almighty, that it just like the fact that we lost him at this age, know, yo, that man. fucking hurt, man. It really yeah. does. That but, hurts the heart. But you know what? I think what Akira Toriyama would want us to do is to continue to love and enjoy the Dragon Ball franchise. Go back and watch mm-hmm. all of his works. Um, uh, and. Uh, just hold it close to our hearts because, hey, man, we all grew up with Dragon Ball. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we literally did. did. The amount of influence a character like Goku has had and the lessons that he imparted upon children of always striving harder and keep working and never give up on pursuing even the impossible dream of getting stronger and stronger, it cannot be underestimated how much of a role model that guy was. Okay, fine. The dub fucked up some of his motivation, but they fixed that in the Kai dub. Ultimately... Goku as a character has become almost a symbol to people of what that what is important to never give up and always strive and keep fighting and fighting and fighting. fighting Vegeta has fight. become the blueprint for rival characters throughout the entire world. Yeah. Without and- Vegeta, we wouldn't have Sasuke. And all you oh. freaks of there over there wouldn't have the freaking kiss that wrote a million fanfics. <laughs> yep. All right. I Literally on the first I love, day. I love the and character of Vegeta. Even if people never actually watched Dragon. Dragon Ball. You will. They recognize they Goku. People yeah. who never seen anime in their lives. They know about they go, Goku. Oh my god, that's Goku. Yeah, they'll, they'll look at like, I, I, I've i never watched, but that's Goku. Okay, I recognize yeah. Goku. Like, you can't really say that about many characters. No. So. Like, it's... <laughs> It's sort of, Transcending it's, cultural barriers. It's yeah. one of the mm-hmm. most recognizable franchises and characters ever, not just because he of our really influence, but how yeah. present it is everywhere. Any country you go in the world, you say Goku, and somebody's going to be like, yes! Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Exactly. Did you say Goku? Hey, up there, uh, Lisa Boo, welcome to the Ravens Thank flock. Thank you. No, I kid you not, guys. Last night, after I after I finished dinner and everything, and I needed to step back out in order to pick up the stuff for dinner for tonight, everyone. By the way, 
Y'all are gonna love the food. Uh, food really literally food. in the aisle Starving. of the Walmart that uh, that I was at, uh, there was a dude wearing a Goku shirt and uh, like a, Dra- a Dragon Ball Z shirt. It was the it was a Goku with Ultra Instinct up on him. Yeah, and he and I made eye contact uh, for just a second. Like we lost a real one, man. So he's like, "Yeah, we did, man." Speaking of, it's uh, real. Uh, All right, what? and I believe you have so something to share, Juancho. To- a Goku shirt. We need a Goku shirt. I do have one thing to share. Don't I have? Uh, the creator of Bleach, Taikubo, recently dropped his own statement regarding this matter. Remember, this man would not have a job if it wasn't for Toriyama. It would be strange to write a diary without mentioning this, so I'll just talk about something serious. Personally, I don't feel any loneliness or pain. I'm not saying there aren't any, but there aren't as many as I thought. It's the dead or somewhat I have read since I was a child. Somebody who works in the same magazine as me, and someone who I am deeply influenced by and indebted to. So it feels different that when I deal with death in general, but that's why I feel like it doesn't exist. I never really talked about this to anyone, but I always believe that creating things means expanding your sensibilities and expanding your life. This is because I believe that as long as the work exists, the author is not dead. And I believe that being able to properly get used to this feeling is proof of the magnitude of the work's existence that remains in my heart. That is all. For the next post, I'll continue with my usual enthusiasm. Damn, oh, man. man. Kubo has been writing about death for so long that he, he has like a different perspective about it, I suppose. But he's right. Because Toriyama may have left us, but his work and the, the, the way that he has on. touched the hearts and souls of people throughout the world is immortal. Because it's- even at the end of the world, when humanity is rich to the, basically completely wiped out, and there's just two dudes in the post-apocalypse about to fight to the death, one of them will be like, but he ain't beating Goku though. Fuck you! No, no, no never. Exactly. This is how uh, this is how heartbreaking it, it was. Ah, damn. You guys know what this meme is. Yeah, we do. For those of you who don't know what it's saying, you, like we recognize the meme. The 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 witch. What was her name again? I forgot her name. Okay. I forgot her name. Oh, this is Tori- <laughs> By the way, this little uh, this little uh, Kubo- oh hey look, it's the mask that inspired the shy guys from uh, Mario. Ah, ah, like ah. that is actually a Kira Toriyama's his little self insert anime uh, avatar of himself. The witch there, she's a character in Dragon Ball saying, "Okay, let's t- it's time to go." He's saying, "Was I a good cartoonist?" Baba. Fortune teller Baba. Fortune teller Baba. Baba, thank you. Because Baba means grandma, of course. Uh, adorable. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, time to go. And Toriyama saying, was I a good cartoonist? She says, no. I was told you, you were, were the, the greatest in the universe. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And also, you see there's even a Goku waving goodbye with angel wings I over think there somebody made an, an extension of a droid and it's poor Toriyama running through the snake way going, wow, this is taking longer than I thought. Hang <laughs> 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 on. Give me a sec. <laughs> as long as he doesn't try jumping because we yes. remember how, what you know. We know he, what happened the first time. He yeah. fell down to Hiffle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he spent what, a few episodes trying to, oh, man. trying to get back yes. up from Hiffle. What a man, what a creator. What an extraordinary, like, like the mark. He has become. He may have left at sixty-eight, but that man is immortal. Now, Juan. Now, Juan has also pulled up a tweet here that actually uh... something that I sent to you, Angel. Uh, yeah. I think we that also needs to be brought up as a as a point of uh, of contention for all that. Um, check it. Toriyama died of a uh, acute subdural hematoma. Yoshifuma Kondo died of an aortic dissection. Kentaro Miura died of his aortic dissection. This is an all too common problem in the manga slash anime community. Creators are forced to work overtime with little to no breaks. This needs to change. Yeah, unfortunately, this is just another example of the hellish conditions these people will put themselves through just to deliver the deadlines on time. Famously, Bleach had to end earlier because Kubo literally nearly lost the use of his hands due to his health condition, and we still have people who drop dead in the middle of work. The conditions that these people put themselves through just to deliver those chapters on time are borderline subhuman and the amount of let's just say that there's a reason people forgive Oda for taking so many breaks because they don't want that poor man to extinguish himself before One Piece ends mm-hmm. hell famously one of your famous series is Vampire um, uh, Vampire uh, Trinity Blood Trinity Blood oh yes yeah, the creator passed away due to overworking himself before he could finish the manga and he, mm-hmm. sadly nobody ever he just kind of it ended that's yeah, it. Yeah, no, I think. Yeah, no. Want you guys make up a good point. This is a problem that needs to be addressed, and it's been and it's been and it's happened uh, far too many times now with manga writers. I mean, you well, know, there's no off. There doesn't seem to be an off period for them. It's not just the fact that they work hard. It's the fact that some of them are manic about their work. 
they will put them it's not just the culture they want to get their ideas out there so badly that they will work non goddamn stop even when people tell them to please take breaks we're willing to work and they're just still well the creator of fist and the north star i write said that you have to suffer for your art but i think they may have taken a little too literally in some i cases. think they yeah. may take the suffer part a little it's too a little literal, too literal friends, there buddy but the art is so good but bro you're about to die but i almost got it <laughs> But I've almost got it. Instead of like like bookworms like K Storm, who's like who's reading their uh, their uh, uh, their novels or uh, fan fiction or anything. No, I've just got one more chapter. One more chapter. No, <laughs> yeah, these yeah, poor yeah. guys. They're I'm just writing, writing one more chapter. chapter. One, more yeah. one more panel. One more, one more panel. panel. One, more panel. one more panel. And listen, yeah. I get it. It's the, at the end of the day, it's their choice. It's their decision. They want to work on something passionate. And yes, of course, you do suffer for your art. But is it is it worth enough to put your own health and well-being at risk. Nope. On one hand, I want to say no. On the other hand, this might this guy made Dragon Ball. <laughs> Shit. Aim Aim. for the stars and devour the sun. Still, See, he yeah, no, you're right, he though. was the greatest in the universe. This is why I'm willing to wait for uh, for the crew that is working on Berserk to take their. They say that they have to go on break this month too because they're working on another manga. That's fine. Take as much time as you need. I don't care if I have to wait until I'm 50 for Berserk to be finished. <laughs> Just please. Yep. Take your time, mind Pace your health. yourself. It is always good to pursue your dream, but take a moment to breathe and smell the roses. Remember yeah. to stop for a minute and check yourself before you continue. And Unless also, you break your legs because you ran too fast. Because if you keep going on, you're like, one you're more, one more, one more, out. then it's going, like, what's going to happen again if you lose, you know, ability to use your arm? Well, now you can't. Yeah, yeah. no. Togashi <laughs> Sensei, in particular, creator of Hunter Hunter, yep. notorious for having some chapters where he was in such a bad health condition that the chapter that came out looked like a scribble. His assistants had to jump in and fix that crap quickly because otherwise yep. you couldn't even tell what was going on in the panel. The guy had to basically go on hiatus for almost a whole year yep. after that. Cover. Well, and that's the thing. Hand injuries take a long time. Time. Because you use your if hands. they even heal oh, properly, if they even heal, especially this, if it's a dominant arm, yeah. yeah. Like there's so many little fiddly bits here that yeah. can break and never fix themselves properly. You could snap a tendon, and guess what? It's not gonna it's because not gonna heal. you don't even yeah. think about not moving your hand. You do it unconsciously. It's yeah. it is subconscious. Yeah. So it's a That's fact why people that people with hand injuries, yes, you want to get your you stuff have to, you out have to there. Basically, so you, so you don't essentially you break your anything. fingers it, it, again it, by doing yeah. something just, stupid. Just look yeah. at uh, just look at Stephen Strange. His fucking things were greatest surgeon of our time. What a terrible loss. Yeah, I know. What happened to him? He kind of just went on a trip and disappeared or something. No, no, he's around. He's okay. Uh, last I heard, he's hanging around in some old ass house up in Greenwich Village. And well, he's rich. I guess he could enjoy his retirement. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I could have sworn I saw him come out like to pick up the newspaper. He was wearing a cloak. That was so weird. Well, he, must maybe, have been during Halloween. Yeah, no. I guess. Rich people are weird, man. Rich people are Rich so people are weird. weird. Now, for, I guess to wrap all this up in a bow is that, hey, listen, Akira Toriyama will be missed, and we love and appreciate that everything that he has given to us in 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 the world of nerd and geek culture for the span uh, in a span of decades. It'll always live on in our hearts and in his work. And for the pricks who want to disrespect him, like I said, there there's a deep there's a deep circle of hell for waiting for you guys. <sighs> but anyways, um, but for real, for real. Look, this says it all, right, Jose? Yeah. It does. It does. We'll see him again sometime. We will someday. But now let's go ahead and move on because we do have other things that we do need to talk about tonight. Um, I just want to make one minor correction from Thursday night. Um, as you know, our boys like to talk about wrestling. Yes. Especially this boy. All right. So Thursday night on Wrestle Rewind, me and Juan, we were actually going back and forth, and we were commenting on uh, uh, for All Elite Wrestling and how they recently re signed a Japanese wrestler by the name of Kazuchika Okada, the, also, a.k.a. the Rainmaker. I gave Angel a very basic rundown yeah. about this guy. Like, okay. He's take basically evil Naruto Rhodes. Yeah, like, okay, take Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Make him Japanese. Yeah. Now make him evil. That's yeah. Kazuchika Okada. Awesome, and okay. he's great. He has a great repertoire. To, uh, he has a great. Uh, he's a great resume to his, uh, to his belt. And we have reported that um, All Elite Wrestling signed Kazuchika Okada and uh, to a three year contract worth uh, I, how much? One okay, two billion yen, which translates to thirteen and a half million dollars. Which thirty means, million, which means uh, he's getting uh, f roughly four and a half million dollars a year. It almost makes you want to get into the ring and risk dang. your life. Damn. Almost. Yes. Ooh. And I had made and I had made a comment saying that that is more than what Brock Lesnar got during his time in the WWE. However, upon further discovery, 
That turned out not to be the case. Yep. Uh, Jose actually went ahead and found a Sports Kita article that, wait, what was that posted, by the way, Jose? Yeah, it was posted recently. Just click on it. For I'm goodness clicking sake. on it, and it's not loading. Let me actually pull up the thing and share it with people. Okay. Um, it's a Sports Kita article that actually gave the twenty, uh, the like the 2023 uh, salaries of WWE wrestlers, and there, it even came with a handy-dandy chart for uh, for everyone on there. So just to give you guys a point, uh, the the point of it, Brock Lesnar actually had a twelve million dollar a year deal with the WWE. So we made a mistake. Uh, we originally said that it was one point two million. Yet, like the, the we had the right digits. Just remove the point. <laughs> it's twelve million, it million a year. Yeah. Twelve million dollars a year. He's that big of a commodity. Yeah. Around, around oh, the point damn. where I finish my, co- I, uh, that's enough for me to go. Okay, I'm gonna work for you for ten years, and then I'm gonna retire and never speak to anybody again. Yeah. 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 Brad Lesnar does like the actual colossal titan and fucking vanishes in a puff of smoke and money. That's that's <laughs> a lot. That is a lot of money. What do you do with it? That is. Uh, what I, I would purchase one. <laughs> the guy lives in a farm. I would somewhere purchase my own island, island far away from U.S. jurisdiction. Yeah. yeah. Like, exactly. I say, does he live in? Uh, does he still live in uh, the states, or is he in uh, Canada? I, I forgot. Canada. I think, I think he moved. I think he moved to Canada. Okay, so point is, yeah, he moved to Canada. He took his <laughs> Look at his face. And he so said he did Canada. disappear forever. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Brock Lesnar just walks out of reality and goes into fantasy land. <laughs> oh my god! With but, the fairies. But again, that is a it's minor correction that I just wanted to address. Say the fairies. I don't want to spend too much time on this because there's really not much else to say. Um, but just uh, keep tuning into Wrestle Rewind for every Thursday night. What's going yeah. on here, K Storm? What are ah, you having? To people s- with lots Bay of money Leafs. turns out to have slightly less lots of money. Bay it happens. Leafs. Oh, Bay Leafs, nice. Yeah. Bye, laugh. Uh, all right, Bay, Bay Leafs. Bay well, Leafs. fucking life. Oh, that reminds me of Bailey, Jose. Oh, god dang it! Huh. Bay Leaf from Pokemon? No, no. <laughs> that, that we're talking about Bailey, the, the awesome badass wrestler. Yes. Uh, okay. Since we're on Jose's wrestling corner here, um, she is uh, not just any wrestler. She's a badass. Uh, for the last two years, she was part of a faction in the WWE that she put together called Damage Control. Yeah. That composed yeah. of Japanese wrestlers of Asuka, Kairi Sane, Io, Io Sky. And uh, Dakota Kai. Yeah, yeah, Dakota Kai, she's from New Zealand, though. New Zealand. Okay, uh, and basically, uh, recently, they had a thing where they all basically turned on her, on Bailey, and threw her out. But the problem is, Eosky is currently WWE's women's undisputed champion. And Bailey just so happens to be the number one contender who's going to be facing Eosky at WrestleMania in less than a month. What, three weeks from now? Mo- so oh, no, one begins. month away. One, one month away. Okay. Or one month away. So apparently, not only is Bailey a badass bitch, but also she is a big fan of Paramore. Um, and hey, I love Paramore. Their you, songs are great. You yeah. may know them as the band that made the only good song in the Twilight Saga. That and other awesome uh, the alt rock songs. My, perfect, uh, my personal favorites are Ignorance and uh, shoot, um. Misery, yeah, business, misery business, maybe. Yeah. So that's where that's from. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, oh, I never yeah, meant no, to no. break. I could yeah, assume that the... they did the one for the Chronicle movie. But oh, that also, was Crush, Crush, Crush. Yeah. Nothing compares to a quiet All right. But, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so Paramore put out a video clip on Twitter um, in support in support of Bailey. Now, uh, uh, you're, you're going to love this. Actually, Jose, I'm going to give you a, a little what's up. Here, yeah, why don't you give me a the Five, and I'll take care. Give me just a second. I got this. Uh, Zayn is trying to share. So, Streets of Ulda have a bonfire vigil for Akira Toriyama. Some characters glammed up like Goku or other various other characters from Toriyama's works. In Final, In Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy 14, 14 online. No Jesus. Yes. Yeah, the monk class can wear a slime hat. Yeah. Oh. Also, let's not forget yeah. that, you know, his design for the slime is one of the most popular, like, minion designs ever made in history of gaming. They literally yeah, went, hey, I Toriyama, got we gotta make a bad guy for this game. He drew the slime, and they're like, okay, never mind. Toriyama just designed the style for the whole game. And that's why you go. That's why Dragon Quest is just Final Dragon Z Fantasy Ball. <laughs> so... All right. So, so with Bailey having been a gigantic fan of uh, Paramore, Paramore and Haley Williams particularly, um, she was like, "Oh, it'd be so cool if I if I got to come out at WrestleMania in Philadelphia uh, with, to a Paramore song. They'd be so badass." To which Paramore have given their reply on social media. Juan, share it. Dig this. This is how much of a badass this is. Remember the word simmer. That's the name of a uh, simmer. Yeah, that was. Remember how I said this is important, uh. guys. Yes. Bailey says, dude, I want to play Summer for my entrance at WrestleMania. Whoa. 
you have our permission. <laughs> Yo! So that's how you know. <laughs> They're not, even, says, Dude, uh, they're not even charging her. He's like, bro, Ooh. do it for free. Like, hey! Do you know how that. amazing that would be to literally have a pair of more the, Yeah, them yeah. actually say, hey, you have Here's a permission. It. Literally, so right here, it. permission. Like, do, no, it, do it. So at this point, no. <laughs> so at this point, um, what we've got here is uh, the only thing that uh, folks are waiting for at this point is just uh, waiting for the WWE to get to cross their T's and dot their I's in order mm -hmm. to uh, go in order to actually get the like, OK, they say yes, we say yes, but we got to actually sign the paperwork. OK, here's a license. Here's a fee, uh, whatever. We're, it's WrestleMania. It's the biggest show of the year. Hey, we're only a month away. Yeah, Anything let's fucking throw WWE. money at it. OK, that'll be fine. One, I mean, no. one way to get some popularity on your show if is going to go, hey, what if we put my song in one of the most well-known wrestling shows of all time? That sounds like a pretty good way to get some eyes on my disc. One thing that is true, folks, and they've said this many times, anything can happen in the WWE. Yep. And uh, again, congrats. And so, congratulations to Bailey. And like I said, she's a bad, uh, she's a badass. She's the one who actually shared the tweet. And yeah, just so y'all see, yeah, that's her. She is awesome, and she's insane, and she's a bad bitch. So, do, like, smells good, damn. Like, check it. Her with Cody when they won their uh, respective Royal Rumble matches nice. at uh, the, earlier this year to earn their spots at WrestleMania. They had T-shirts made for them right away. So Yay. yeah, like, so that's like fucking awesome. That is pretty good. So yeah, that was really good. So yeah, again, congratulations, Bailey. Now it's just a matter of getting the the suits to do their work. Like okay, hard parts the uh, hard parts over. Now do the shit that you guys are paid to do and fucking get the rights so they can play her out. Fuck yeah! Time to promote the shit out of this, basically. All exactly. right, and that's gonna do it. Now we're gonna shift things over to the video gaming news. Now originally. We were going to bring this up Wednesday night on the Black Files, but then we got blindsided with breaking news of the sh of, of the closure of Rooster Teeth. So now oh. we actually have a chance to share it. And Angel, I think you're the right guy to lead this. But before Thank we you. get to that, let's turn our attention to the chat for a sec. Okay, Jokai35. A up Jokai and Kurisi Randosama. A up the Kurisi and Moon Thank Dragon you. as well. Moon Dragon, all three of y'all, welcome to the Ravens Flock. Jokai35, I was devastated when I heard of Akira's passing. I was inspired by Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid and started drawing anime when I was 12. Ooh, nice. Yeah, damn. See? Yep. The amount You're of people and artists that have been trying to do their own thing because one time they saw the monkey man fight the lizard man who was like monkeys. And I'm like, oh wow, he's fighting racism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, and now and now Frieza's even more of a racist caricature. He's become black. Yeah. Not his... blackface, just black in general. No, actually, it's black and he still has white parts I think on it. was him. the purple parts that were still left. Oh, on. no, you're right. I got it, it, it is purple parts. Black with white accents. Is this in like Super? Or... Uh, yeah, yeah, this is in Super. Oh, okay. I so yet. literally, he went white to gold to black. He has no, white he still privilege. Still white. And what's up? The chest piece is white. Oh, the chest piece is still so, white. For those so of he you literally who has white yeah. privilege and black power at the same time. He's the he has the most powerful worst, being in the universe. He is the, he is the most powerful racist in the universe. So, God damn it. For don't know, uh, Frieza, after getting his ass kicked so many times, both in gear and super, as you know, after training for one month, he went from white to gold, which is incredible. Yeah. So Frieza is like, well, I have all this power and I have all this talent. I'm going to look into the planets that I conquered to see if one of them has a hyperbolic time chamber. So Let's he went into one and he trained for 10 goddamn years. So by the time he came out, he knocked out Goku and Frieza in one punch and Vegeta in one punch and went, I could kill you right now, but I'm going to wait for you to come to me. And before he leaves, he looks at the poor NPCs of this arc going, you two looking for a job? I could use some dishwashers in the Frieza Force. Oh! Wow! <laughs> Jerk! And for the record, wow. Frieza doesn't lie to himself. He's 100% true about his racism. In the Super Arc, when he specifically picks a fight with Kefla, he goes, what's your problem with saying? And he goes, I guess you could say I am somewhat prejudiced. <laughs> <laughs> Frieza does not give a shit. He... He throws around the word filthy monkey. Monkey. Like, like, he has to, like, he with has to hard be M. <laughs> He has to, with the hard M. Exactly. He's, oh he is God. so terribly evil and racist. It's, it's a, it's not even funny. Now, some it comments from Moon, Moon Dragon. Right, guys, Moon yeah. Eye Dragon comments saying, I need to watch this stream because I love Dragon Ball because as an artist, I am inspired by his artwork and stuff. And, and Goku Black. Yeah. Goku. Don't shoot. This man is not black. Oh, Frieza would, what? <laughs> Frieza would get canceled on Twitter. He would. <laughs> Without a second thought. That's and the funniest part, though. Frieza would just buy Twitter. 
Oh no! no! Or destroy it. You're not wrong. He'll he would nuke it. Would nuke no, no, no. He would nuke it. He would nuke okay, Twitter. Okay, you know how you know how Twitter, Twitter was uh, changed to X. Yeah. yeah. He would it, change it to F. He, he would just change Twitter it to F. Make a new Twitter. Don't forget, though, Frieza may be a horrifying, monstrous, psychotic dictator. But he will pay you real good. Like, if you do work for him, he has an excellent job. <laughs> top of the if you don't armor. get killed or if he doesn't kill you. If he doesn't yeah. kill you. You gotta stay out of his like, way. You, you, you basically get the best... Uh, the best job, kind of best benefits. job in the universe. You get the best benefits. You get paid really well. You have job security. The only thing you have to do is not piss this midget Stay fucker racist alien off. Oh, no, Stay way in the, the back room. That's the best part. Here's the best oh part. Oh my god, you guys are spending too much time with this. Sorry, I gotta get to this part. <laughs> it's okay. important. It's according okay. to Dragon Ball Kakarot, the game, and according to supplemental information from the Broly, the Super Broly movie, Frieza straight up is perfectly cordial with his workers. Like, he will treat you perfectly nicely. He will pay you for your work. He will give you the benefits. And if you do a really good job, like the Ginyu Force, you could even get your own planet. That's crazy. However, <laughs> do not, <laughs> under any circumstances, point out how short he is. <laughs> wait, wait, you, you yeah. mean like not pointing out how short we are? Yeah. Hi, K-Storm. He will More kill. like, don't point out how short Ed Elric is. Uh, well, all I'm saying is that that is the shortest way to piss anyone off. Uh, there is exactly one character that gets away with that, and her name is Berry Blue, and she is his nanny. It's the evil oh. blue lady that you see. Oh God, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a that's his nanny. She's the, that's a lady. That's the closest thing to a mom that Frieza ever had, and what? the only character in the entire franchise that gets away with teasing him about that to the <sighs> point that he doesn't kill the slug guy that was three feet away from him, and shitting himself in fear. Like, wait, really? If that's what's happening, and he looks at Frieza like, "Oh God, I'm gonna die," and Frieza stands like this and goes. Yes, all right, that's exactly why. And the guy goes, <laughs> oh, God, Mr. Frieza, why, why didn't you just apply one of your other forms? Because those forms are weaker. Okay, but why do you want to just grow five centimeters? Because I... W and Frieza looks so fucking embarrassed <laughs> because I want people to think I'm still growing. All right, all right. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. Exactly five centimeters. So, yeah, no, Berry Blue is the only character that gets away with it because she took care of him when, since he was a child. <laughs> all right. That is the only character that can get away with that. All right. Let's go ahead and move on, Angel. Right. Let's, let's talk about something slightly more evil than Frieza. Oh, let's no, talk about gonna, Nintendo. Let's, I was yeah. giving War flashback here in Dragon Ball Z. Broly had a oh, crush on yes. Gogeta. I don't know yes. yes, let's Very actually good. get into the subject of Nintendo now. Because no, no, while All the together. Nintendo Very showcase good. a couple of weeks ago, that well, the Nintendo Direct was fun and awesome. That's her. Let's not forget, the corporate side of Nintendo is scummy as fuck. Alas, yes. Nintendo, while being the one that has somehow consistently eked out victories in this increasingly stupid console race by delivering good games, good products, and affordable and affordable consoles is ultimately a big corpo that has been basically staffed by ancient Japanese dinosaurs. There is a reason why Nintendo is considered to be somewhat out of area because they are kind of like the Disney of their own world. They are extremely, extremely anally retentive about their personal image and they can and will bring down the hammer of law upon anyone that may infringe upon that image the fact that there's a it looks like you're infringing on a copyright if you're gonna, gonna we get sued all the way to hell luigi twist his balls i'm a twist it <laughs> grab his stick and twist it <laughs> give him luigi give him number the, one give all him right. the testicular torsion <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, things are not going very well. As you know, the the, the idea and the, the black market of video game emulation has been a thing since as long as we can remember. And it has only grown more and more powerful ever since the consoles and the companies have given us increasingly reduced returns with increasingly expensive consoles. Abs yeah, that's right. And in an article provided to us by Polygon.com, uh, yep, the headline reads... Nintendo wins the $2.4 million in the Switch emulator lawsuit, and Yuzu is forced to shut down. For the record, they were perfectly fine with letting Yuzu stick around and not do anything as long as they weren't making too many waves. This lawsuit began when they found out that some of the emulators were kept behind a gate, uh, behind a paywall, because the guy basically is like, I, can eat, I cannot hold all these servers by myself. Mm -hmm. I, gotta, I gotta get a little money so I can keep this thing running. And Nintendo basically went, oh, so you're making money off our shit. Oh, so you're making money off of us, are you? Are you, you son of a bitch? Wario, take his coins. See, <laughs> see, 
if if they just have donations to help with servers, it would have gone completely. That different. was kind of what it was. That's what it was. It, it was, was the donations okay. Yeah, it was basically okay. a PayPal to go. Hey guys, if you can throw us a little cash to keep this thing running, we appreciate. Wait, oh, wait, no, oh, no, shit. no, wait, no, because it's, it's Patreon. Patreon, you have to actually pay, pay. I forgot. But if it's mm-hmm. donations, then I it forgot could've... what yeah. method he was using. I don't think it was Patreon. But it was uh, a different method. I but thought it was said Patreon. And one ultimately, the result yeah. was still the same. He was making money, and Nintendo was not happy that he was Nintendo making money. Nintendo went, no. Yeah, if you put anything behind an actual paper, like, hey, you get this, but you have to uh, pay this much in order to access it. No. And then yeah. they went, no. now we got a problem. Now so Nintendo it's... slapped them with the lawsuit, and rather than drag this out for possibly years, increasingly high legal costs, Yuzu decided that the smartest thing to do was fold, pay, and call it a day. Yeah, and it was a pain in the ass. Let, let me oh, give you guys the article. Uh, wait, what was Struggler saying yeah, over here? Uh, let's see. See, yeah, here see. is the thing. Yuzu was forcing people to forcing yeah. people to pay oh, for the new version. Yeah, forcing. Yeah. Oh, well, see, like I said, if you are forced to pay, that's no. That's if it's uh, donations, okay. like for in coffee or something, By that the way, should be fine. That, that speaking of be things fine. being forced so... to pay, you are now legally obligated to pirate Cave Story. Do not download it from the official site. Pirated because oh. the guys in charge of it literally stole the IP from the creator <gasps> because he didn't know English well enough. Okay, then. Oh, you gotta oh. be shitting me. So it okay. is your duty as a citizen of the US of A to What's... pirate Cave Story. Yo ho! Cave Story? So you said Cave All right. Story? Yeah, Let's go ahead and free. scroll down through the article, Juan. All right. Yeah. Article comes by way of Nicole Carpenter over at no, Polygon. Nicole. All right. Angel, take it away. Makers of Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu owe Nintendo $2.4 bajillion after reaching a settlement with League of Legends Zelda Tears of the Money Makers developers, following a lawsuit over the open source emulator just last week. Both Nintendo and Tropic Haze, the company behind Yuzu, filed for final judgment and permanent injunction on Monday, according to the court documents. After Nintendo accused the Yuzu makers of copyright infringements, <clears throat> Circumvention of Nintendo's Switch projections and selling the circumvention technologies as Yuzu, among others. Now, scroll that right up. Thank you. The settlement is pending a judge approval, however. Yuzu is a free Nintendo Switch emulator that was released in 2018, months after the Nintendo uh, launched the Switch. It is a piece of software that lets people play Nintendo Switch games on their computers or phones, including Tears of the Kingdom, which Nintendo cited in the lawsuit, saying that Yuzu let people play leaked copies of the game early. Specifically, Nintendo said that more than 1 million people played the game before the release day because of the leaked copies. Yuzu doesn't offer... What is this? Water. Water Does it keep choking and dying? No, that was because I had the hiccups. Yeah, water for hiccups. (laughs) Yeah, and we don't want to take any risks with you. No disrespect. I don't. I wouldn't know what to tell your brother or your mom. Tell them I died the way I wanted to, flapping my gums. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my your, god. Keep, okay, scroll down there. Nintendo said that more than one bajillion people played the game before the release, so they lost money. Yuzu doesn't offer pirated of leaked games itself, but Nintendo targeted the company because the emulates is one of the few ways to play these games. Exclusivity and all that shit. Beyond the money, the terms of the settlement dictate that Tropic Haze will have to stop operations on Yuzu entirely. <clears throat> it cannot distribute in any way, nor can it market on every website or social media. Yuzu will also have to give up their domain name. So you don't even get to have a website, damn. 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 In a statement published on Discord, Yuzu maker Bume confirmed that anything related with Yuzu will come offline. Piracy was never our intention, and we believe that piracy of video games and on video game consoles should end effective. Today, we will be pulling our code repositories offline, discontinuing our Patreon accounts on Discord service, and soon shutting down our websites. We hope that our actions will be a small step towards ending piracy of all creator works. And then, the guy behind him pulled the gun away from his head and went, Good. <laughs> oh my god. See, I told like, you that was Patreon. A, like that like Mudahar from some ordinary gamers, he even tweeted that that statement said you could almost hear the rifle uh <laughs> barrel behind this the guy's Nintendo head. Ninjas. Just, yeah. Tanto is uh. to his fucking throat. Exactly. God. They, they, no, no, they didn't have guns. They had Nintendo zappers. Yes. Yeah. They had super scopes. Super, yeah. super scopes them. where they shoot ducks. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, now then, the website, Patreon page, and the Get Who repositories for both Yuzu and Nintendo 3DS emulator Citra have also all been taken down. The Nintendo 3DS, the one that Nintendo is not even supporting, but no, you can't even have that. 
fuckers. The Nintendo Discord channel remains. A Nintendo representative pointed Polygon towards the Entertainment Software Association, then reached for comment on the settlement. Lawyers for the emulator market did not respond to a request for comment. The Tears of the Kingdom publisher is known to be strict with its intellectual property. Nintendo has won several lawsuits targeting pirated game sites like Rome Universe, where it awarded them the more than 2 million in damages, and Nintendo also notoriously went after an alleged Nintendo Switch hacker named Gary Bowser, who was <laughs> arrested and charged for selling Switch hacks. Though he was released from prison, he still owes them $10 million. He paid $175 in prison from the money he earned working in the prison library and kitchen. Okay, so another in other words, oh! Nintendo, this is not the first rodeo for Nintendo. They have oh, dealt no. with these cases. They have a history of doing this, which is why I hope they keep getting pirated for fucking ever. The Nintendo and Yuzu lawsuit has <laughs> ignited once again a debate on emulation whether the act is inherently illegal. Of course, emulation fans don't believe that. A lot of people see Yuzu and other emulators as an important tool for video game presentation and preservation. Nintendo clearly Okay, disagrees. can we pause really quick with that? Yeah. Sometimes... These emulators are the only way that you can play old games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I you have... can't get anymore. In yeah. my very old laptop, so... I used to have an emulator so I could play Nintendo 64 games. Mm -hmm. What's the best Pokemon game, in your opinion? Crystal. 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 Pokemon Stadium. Crystal. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> Pokemon Crystal is going off for $270. Mm -hmm. What? And that's yeah. if it even works. Because remember, yeah. some of these games... Don't Might not work anymore. anymore. Pokemon yeah. Stadium. What, what console was that again? Pokemon Game for the N64. Key. The N64, yeah. a console that doesn't what even exist. The cost of Pokemon Stadium is... It begins at $99, and it goes as high as $1,264. Don't tell me the N64 yeah. doesn't exist, Angel. We have it right in front of us. All I see is an empty space that gets kind of shaped like a console. The point is, oh they are not God. making any more Nintendo 64s. You know what else they're not making? 3DSs. 3DSs yeah, anymore. Yeah. Any game on 3DS that you want to obtain right now, good fucking luck. Those physical copies are expensive beyond belief. Mm -hmm. So, while I understand that Nintendo, as the creator of these properties, has the right to pursue legal action and somebody tries to profit from them, I also understand that they are about half of their library doesn't exist. It is unavailable legally, impossible to obtain, or too expensive for the average person to afford. Yeah. So, and that's a I lot get of really it, good games. Yeah. But the ocean yes. calls to me. And I will sail the seven seas. And it looks like in that article from Polygon, there is an update to the story that we need to touch on. One. All right. Let me see the update over here. The update uh, reads, uh, here, I'll take care of this one. Bunny. Bunny, one of Yuzu's creators, published a message addressing the settlement on the group's Discord page, where they said all Yuzu code, Patreon accounts, and Discord servers will be shut down. We've updated the story to include a portion of the statement. And here's the full message. Hello, users and Citra fans. We write, ah. we write today to inform you that Yuzu and Yuzu's support of Citra are being discontinued effective immediately. Yuzu and its team has always been against piracy. We started the project in good faith, out of passion for Nintendo and its consoles and games, and we're not intending to cause harm. But we see now that because our projects can circumvent in score. Nintendo's uh, technological protection measures and allow users to play games outside of authorized hardware, they have led to extensive piracy. In particular, exactly like this. <laughs> in particular, we have been deeply disappointed where users have used our software to leak game content prior to its release and ruin the experience for legitimate purchasers and fans. We have come to the decision that we cannot continue to allow this to occur. Piracy was never our intention, and we believe that piracy of video games and on video game consoles should end. Effective today, we will be pulling our code uh, rep uh, repositories offline, discontinuing our Patreon accounts and Discord servers, and soon shutting down our websites. We hope our actions will be a small step uh, towards ending piracy of all creators' works. Thank you for your years of support and for understanding our decision. Okay, really quick. Um, the remaining parts of your loved ones so will be mailed exactly to you. Exactly how, <laughs> did, how did they leak like the, okay. the Tears game? Some do, do you want to know what it was? Was it them or was it the users? You want to know how it leaked? Here's how it leaked. It wasn't, a, it wasn't any of the users in the game. Actually, yes, it was. But one of the users just so happened to have been somebody who was working at like the publishing manufacturing plant at Nintendo. Oh. They got a hold of a copy and they went and took the copy. Imbeciles. And uh, uploaded and, it? And they were, went ahead and uploaded it. You know what the best part it. is? Oh! Yes. The best part, is, the, best part oh is despite all of this happening, I'm not going to tell you the name of the website. You'll find it out yourself. I can just go on the internet right now, and if I wanted to, 
I could download all of Tears of the Kingdom and play it on my PC. Yo ho! Okay, so wait a minute. So did no one on the staff actually realize that it was uploaded? Most um, likely they found out later. They're like, how did they find out? Oh, it has to have been from the... The call is coming from inside the house, Snake. <laughs> mm, wow. Link, the call is coming from your garden. The way you told the story, Juan, that, that sounds like... I'm sorry. I know it's... I'm not trying to diminish it, but it sounds so ridiculous. It sounds like uh, something like an employee from like Willy Wonka would do to sell Most their secrets the of candy. Kind of, yes. The company yeah. secrets you know to what? Slugworth. Most likely that's the reason they found out because they leaked it before the game was officially released. Because, okay, once the game is out there and people buy it, if somebody gets the code and puts it online, there's nothing you can do. It's their copy. They can do whatever they want with it. But the but fact it that it came out before they could make the big box, Moreover, that's what made people go, wait a minute. Inside work. Espionage, corporate sabotage. Get the ninjas. Get the ninjas. Get the, ninjas. Get the Nintendo ninjas. You know, I'm like, did that person ever get caught? Because I'm sorry, but um, oh, they're dead. I'm pretty they're sure dead. that okay. person's buried. I was going to say, no, no, there are cameras no, no, everywhere. That's the worst part. Yeah. They're still alive, one. Oh, no. They are strung up by their feet on somebody's office right now. <laughs> and every day, every day, for every thousand copies of Zelda that doesn't sell, they pull out a knife and they take a chunk of his skin. Jesus, oh, dude, dude, angel! Right. One fact, the Chinese, these two people who invaded the Great Wall, there was oh a name for the torture. Jesus. And then, when his suffering is complete, when he's nothing more than red, raw, and crying, only then, only then will they take a sword and plunge it through their heart. Only then will he have their permission to die. Then they'll look for his family. Oh my god! Yeah, no, like, okay, so basically the argument that was made by, in, was as far as story. the, uh, as far as the game preservation side of all this stuff, the folks are, uh, who are trying, who are basically arguing in defense of you, who are basically saying, like, look, it's a tool, like any other tool, it's not up to the, the, the people who manufacture the tool on how it's used or misused. Uh, a screwdriver can be used to assemble a cabinet or jab somebody in the back of their skull. It, like, it, it's not the manufacturer's fault. It's kind of like the same argument you get with gun manufacturers, yeah. except the difference is guns are made to kill things. They have a specific purpose. For killing things. Yeah. So, like, that argument kind of doesn't really work Not all really. that well, but it's still, there's a, it holds enough water, but there's a leak on the side of the pail. And, <laughs> that's uh, a good act. That's a good act, Lori, actually. That's a good one. But it holds just enough water, but the ground is awfully wet Yeah, it's here. like, when you actually have to pay in order to get the stuff, yeah, no, not good. Mm -hmm. But, again, like, preserving these games that you can no longer really find, or, again, to expense. That, I mean, like, for me, again... Pokemon Crystal is one of my favorite Pokemon games. We played. I still that have game mine. I don't know if it works again. anymore. But can you imagine if it doesn't work, but I really want to play that game? I can't. Yeah. No. You're because not it's buy lost. It. You can Forever. watch people having played it, but it's not the same as actually have, yeah, having it you yourself. can't put your, you can't do what you want in that game. Exactly. You have yeah. to watch so someone like, else I, do it. And, and they're not going to ever technically re-release it. No, they won't. Unless I they mean, make if a they do it, it's going to be remake. Oh my god, if they make but, a remake. But that's the thing. They're not going to remake every single game. They are planning they make. to make uh, Diamond and Pearl, aren't they? They mentioned oh, something Oh, why like can't you just make Crystal? But the point being is that these old generation games are not accessible. It's hard to, uh, to, uh, to access these games these days mm -hmm. because the consoles are no longer being developed. They're it's not a, being supported. They're not oh, being supported. Oh, don't forget, uh, the one of the most well-known ones, Black and White, $352. What the hell? I still have that yeah, game. Yeah, black and white. Think yeah. about my baby. It don't matter if you're wow. black or white. Wait, you mean I could make that much if I sold it? If you I have black want and white. to. Maybe more. Yeah. Oh, money, money, I have, money, money. I'm I, have, on I to, have both games. Listen, I'm hanging on I to three black, original copies of Final white. Fantasy VII, VIII, and IX. It's true. I, I don't want copies. to know how much those things will go off to. Because, yeah, yeah, the a remake lot. looks cool, but I'm not paying $70 for, like, a, three pieces of a game each. I got the original. And that means that I could play the original whenever I wanted to. But one day, those copies are going to get so old, they're not going to work anymore. Yep. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, Come do you have any idea on, where I'm... Thank you, Lyra. I appreciate it. Yeah, but more importantly... Do you have the slightest idea how much it would cost me to get my hands on original copies of Legend of Dragoon? You know what? Yeah, Let me do some yeah. research right now. And while you're uh, doing research... I mean, the good thing is you could actually still play the original Final Fantasy VII online. You can. Yes. Yeah. Well, but you... what if all those vanished? You yeah. will never be able to. 
like you were saying, Jose. Oh no, and like I said, you know, and it's important, and it's important, and having an emulator is not necessarily a bad thing. How else are we going to play? Old, how else are we going to uh, play old generation consoles? Not yeah. everybody has access to th these old consoles. Also, That's another thing. We're not rich, dude. The games are getting more expensive right now. Oh, like yes. instead of buying my own consoles, me and my little bro are actually pulling our money together to buy a PS5. Not probably not even like right now. We're gonna wait until like halfway through the year when the good games start coming out, maybe. And even then, we're going for the slimmer version of the PS5 that still takes physical discs. Always but, take physical discs. But we are not wasting $70 on brand new games. We're waiting until those things go on discount. Oh, yes. Uh, PlayStation Network. I uh, always yes. buy if it's on discount. Hang on a minute. I believe K-Storm would like to chime so, in. So, okay. K. Yeah. So, I just bought, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, plus a couple of other things, few other things, literally just the other day. And these were bought... Some of them were bought pre-owned. Yeah. Yep. Nearly four hundred dollars. I'm taking out the other items that I got that weren't games. Yeah. Four hundred dollars. And these are used, mm -hmm. not even brand new. Yep. Mm -hmm. The games in I've question. I got thirty thousand dollars in credit card debt. Stop it. <laughs> the games in question: Pokemon Sword, mm -hmm. Scarlet and Violet, mm -hmm. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. That's mm -hmm. a good one. Bayonetta Origins. Hey, that's yeah. Yes, I got that for us to play. The, the Kawaii Demon. one. So there's in the Lost Demon. The Star Wars Heritage pack with classic games. Nice. Ooh. And of course, for my huh, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Right here. But my point. <laughs> You're like here. Exactly. Put it into my heart. Exactly. But my my point being, just those, just those few. Shit ton of money. And I spent, once I add in a discounted PlayStation hard drive and some t-shirts, over $500 was what I spent. Don't forget, Nintendo is notorious for... And those are for, all heavily discounted. Don't forget, Ooh, Nintendo so is pricey. notorious for never making the price of their games go down. Some of their older titles are still fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah, and have you ever noticed... Um, the issue of trying to sell your games and you get crap and then they yeah. resell them for way more than what they do. Yeah. Just, like just 15, you. 20 yeah. times. I mean, yeah, yeah. Nintendo yeah. makes amazing games, but everything else around in their company is kind of shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 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 kind of hard to consume their product when you know that there's ev uh, that there's scummy machinations behind the uh, behind the Don't suits. you remember My when games friend. were actually affordable? Yeah. I understand. Yeah, me neither. But you Remember don't have to worry about consuming. Remember when they used to cost like 30 bucks? Because you can't consume without Remember me. when they used to be, you know, Yo. complete? Yeah. Arr. 30, 30 <laughs> bucks in a complete game. After all, you can't spell gamer without R. So, do you guys remember yeah. shooting at ducks? Oh, yes. Yeah. I remember. I remember, yeah. games Jack coming, Hunter. I remember yeah. games coming out and not needing a 60 gigabyte patch to work. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Bro, <laughs> the fact that Hell Divers 2 is one of the most popular games right now because they just go, okay, complete game, all of the content, PvE and P not PvP, just PvE, play yourself, play with friends, barely 30 something bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to download Zane. that hey, one. Hey, you yeah. want to get yeah. the mechs? You uh, can just access the mechs by helping your Angel, fellow players liberate the planet. Now, Angel, we do have another article that actually ties into this story here. Uh, <laughs> this one. Like you said, you can't stop oh progress. You can't stop progress because. You can't stop you are can't we, stop guys, democracy. Guys, are, are we surprised? Are we surprised? No. no. Do your shock Pikachu face. <gasps> In this article from gamer, GamesRadar.com, the headline reads, Barely 12 hours after the shutdown of major Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu, replacements began surfacing online. <laughs> Yuzu, Yo -ho! Yuzu may have died, but its corpse became fertilizer for a whole goddamn forest to come oh, out of the battlefield. Before we go the into the... Before we go into the article, real quick, Kyle Canada's in the chat. Hey, up there, buddy. Uh, emulation technically goes against the do not replicate clause of buying the game. And unless the original source code, any port is technically an emulation. That is a very good argument. I still have my PS3. That's a very good argument, Kyle. However, so anyway, I'm playing video games. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, God. Damn, Angel. That I mean, was savage. He's technically Rest right. Peaceful legend. I technically will, that, that technically will not stop me. Dude, okay, that guy, <laughs> dude, that guy that had the copy and leaked it, that's uh, the next menace to society, said Moon Eye Dragon. Yep. Uh, my favorite is Pokemon Silver. I still have the game, says Ben Cruz. Jokai, yep. The legend will be missed. Yep, yep, yep. I still own my uh, f f Gen 1 PS3, so I can play all my PS1, 2, 3. We still have our PlayStation so 2, 3, 4. Hey. Bro, 
Oh, the emulator user replacement just got uh, uh, ultra in, uh, committed Ultra Instinct on Nintendo. The dun 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 dun. We still have our Game Boy Color. So this article was published four days ago by Catherine Lewis. So let's go ahead. Like everybody, you go ahead. Filter your energy. All right, I'll scroll. I'll 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 continue on. Yep, please get rid of that. I swear. All right. Directly on the back of Nintendo, taking legal action against the Nintendo Switch emulation software Yuzu, alternatives have already started appearing online. (laughs) Yuzu allowed users to play Nintendo Switch games on PC, and last week, it was revealed that Nintendo had filed a lawsuit against uh, Tropic Tropic Haze, the company behind it. At the time, Nintendo alleged that the emulator, quote, provides any internet a user in the world with the means to unlawfully decrypt and play virtually any Nintendo Switch game, including Nintendo's current generation and most popular games, without ever paying a dime for a Nintendo console for that game. It added that, quote, there's no lawful way to use Yuzu to play Nintendo Switch games, partially because it must decrypt games, encryption, uh, games encryption in order to function. Yes. Yesterday. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, your turn. Okay. Uh, yesterday, March 4, it was confirmed that Topic Hayes will pay a $2.4 million settlement to Nintendo. In a statement, the emulation company stated the team has always been against piracy as the blade gently grazed their necks. <laughs> and we have been deeply disappointed that the users have used our software to leak uh, games prior to its release. Please put the gun away. I can't read the script. Yeah. In yeah. hopes of pulling the software online, will be a small step towards ending the piracy of Nero's Wars. Can I see my mom Re- yet? Re- referring no, back, you re- may never see your mother ever again! Referring back to the aforementioned statement that was posted on Discord. However... This hasn't stopped an influx of new emulation software surfacing across social media and beyond an attempt to take users' place, some of which were seemingly uploaded mere hours after the announcement of the shutdown. Tropic Haze hasn't publicly commented on this at the beginning. So basically, the second user shut down, somebody in a dark room pulled out their phone and went... It's yes, time. It's me. It started. It it's, it's it. It started a ripple. It started a ripple effect. God, what the? Engage. Oh, All the, are, are they gonna have to go after these people? They cannot again? sue that many people at this. That's it will way too many. You can sue one of us, but you can't sue all of us with Nintendo saying. Actually, yes, I can. <laughs> Good luck finding me. No, Watch seriously, the moment they try to sue them, they'll just shut the whole thing down and make a new one later. Right? <laughs> well, oh, no. Yusu shut down. It's a shame that Yusu, Yusu 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is still around. <laughs> Jesus. Yusu Although- underscore XOXO underscore your mama. <laughs> All right, Juan, <laughs> it's, right. Your, it's your turn. Although many emulators advertise themselves as being for legal use, it's worth noting that Nintendo's official stance is firmly against emulation of any kind. Oh. Jerks. On its intellectual property and piracy frequently asked questions page, the company states, while we recognize the passion that players have for classic games, supporting emulation also supports the illegal piracy of our products. Wherever possible, Nintendo and its licensees attempt to find ways to bring legitimate classics to current systems via virtual console. Translation by there. overcharging the shit out of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, exactly. bring back that Crystal. Dope fucking yeah. Bring back Crystal. I do have something to add with that. Like, What's or, up, uh, Pokemon. Or, so, uh, I have the Pokemon. perfect object for this. I will raise myself a pint flagon of my personal favorite grog in my Tears of the Kingdom branded <laughs> mug <laughs> to our... To the pirates of the world, yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. You're gonna have to replace that play because it has to say now tears of Nintendo lawyers. <laughs> wow! Wow! Now obviously, wow! Now obviously, Show uno- off. Uh, see, this is why I know they can go after all them because unofficial merchandise will always exist. And if Nintendo had to dedicate that much manpower to sue every single outlet tied to rip off their name, they would basically never get anything done. Well, you you do remember they also go after uh, creators who pretty much make their own version of that. Yes. Like Pokemon Toxic. I still remember the 3D Chrono remake. That was that will never exist now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, because yeah. they're assholes. Mm-hmm. Nintendo may be a huge multi-billion-dollar uh, uh, a gaming company, and they can get uh, and they can get away with any lawsuits they want. But they can, like Juan says, you can't sue every person out there that that shares emulators online because it's all over the place. It's it's. Yeah. They'll it, literally just, just shut it down and make a new one later. Yeah. Exactly. It's oh, gonna... no. I got a cease and desist. I guess I'll just... Hey, guys, listen. The site has to shut down. We got a cease and desist for Nintendo. Also, do not... Remember that scene in The Incredibles 
Or Mr. Incredible is going, okay, do not film this form. Do not talk to this person. Do not bring these documents. Do not, I am not helping you. This is not my prerogative. Try to sound like you're really sad. I am sorry, man, but I cannot help you. <laughs> uh, it's basically yeah. just that. Non goddamn uh, stop. The thing is that the law, the, the, the settlement uh, paperwork, again, thank you, Mudahar and some ordinary gamers, specifically says, by the way, you mofos over here at Yuzu are not allowed to shutter your entire company and then reopen as another name. Obviously no, not. you dissolve 100% yeah, forever. So that one particular thing. But like, oh case boy, just it's shouted. a good thing that online you cannot keep track of literally everybody that worked for Yuzu. It'd be a shame if they all just kind of left the building and then went back to another building. Like, this is like, we gotta shut down this warehouse. And then you look down and it's nothing but warehouses. Jose, you want to you wanna pick this one up because... Uh, yeah, this, sure, no problem. Uh, continuing the trend of emulators uh, 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 running rampant uh, in the wake of the Nintendo lawsuit, we have, another, we have another article that's provided to us by The Verge, and Juan will share this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Democracy cannot be stopped. So in this article from TheVerge.com, the headline reads, The Nintendo DS emulator Drastic is now free <laughs> as Yuzu lawsuit fall out, uh, falls out begins. Tell us if you see more impact from Nintendo... Yeah, <laughs> This was provided. This is article is published by Sean Hollister. This is on. This is the day after, on March fifth. The March fifth. Yep. Scroll down, please. One day after the Nintendo Switch emulator, Yuzu utterly folded in the face of Nintendo's lawsuit. It's not yet clear what other parts of the emulation community might have to fear. But the Yuzu settlement already took the Nintendo 3DS emulator Citra down with it, and it's not only not the only change the community is making, seemingly out of an abundance of caution. The developer of popular Nintendo DS ah, emulator the frozen. Give me a second. There we go. All right. The Nintendo of popular uh, uh, the developer of popular Nintendo DS emulator Drastic just made its app completely free on Android. Previously, it was $4.99, and it intends to pull it down for good. It's Ex called Drastic. Exophase wrote on its official Discord that, quote, I want to make it clear that I don't have any kind of financial incentive, and that Nintendo's move simply, quote, made the whole process more... Urgent. Urgent. Thank you. You need to scroll down. I, I, was to I told you the thing was frozen. Uh, okay. Okay. So the message. All right, so there's this thing. I just changed the app on G on G Play to free. I don't intend to even have it on there for that much longer, but I want to make it clear that I don't have any kind of financial incentive to not opening the source. Releasing the source in short order is something I fully intend on doing. This change can't be undone, so that's it. You was, can't stop it. I was already planning on this a while ago, so it's not simply due to the Nintendo stuff. This just makes the whole process more urgent, which I guess is a good thing because I'm terrible at doing things. Uh, <laughs> ah, that's hilarious! And that's the best part, though. By doing this, he doesn't have to dissolve the program or shut it down. Now anyone can use it. Everyone can use it. It's just not his response. I mean, listen, listen, it's free. I just left it out there. I shut down the shop, and whatever people do with it, that is none of my problem. Oh, oh yeah. boy, I just left the program floating in the internet with the Digimon. I wonder what's going to happen. Gee, it'd be, it'd be a shame if people just started downloading this for free. After you, yeah, bunny. Uh, again? Uh, drastic. 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 All right. So, yeah. Ignore the woman that just I completely do not have left enough. the scene three seconds ago. <laughs> I don't ago. have enough room on my wow, there's phone. there's a lot Sorry. of on Thursday, <laughs> on Thursday, check this out. On Thursday, March 7th, the developer of the Pizza Boy emulators Yay! for Game Boy Advance, Game Boy and Game Boy Colored, bo pulled both his paid and Yay! his free uh, <laughs> emulators off the Google Play Store saying my family comes first. Understandable. God, this... Drastic. Drastic. Dear, yeah. dear, friends and, dear friends and supporters, after seven incredible years of development and adventures with my apps, I have made the difficult decision to remove them permanently from the Play Store. My family comes first, and for this reason, I have chosen to prioritize my family over the development of my apps. I want to thank each and every one of you for your incredible support over the years. Your words of encouragement, feedback, and constant support have been a source of inspiration for me and my work. Thank you for everything. You have been fantastic. With gratitude, David. And oh in. Oh my God. I've been stopping you. <laughs> Hitting in da, da, One million people. Installing. Installing. Hey, wait a second. Like, all right. Aren't the original Metal Gear games also borderline impossible to obtain without emulation? That's a very good question. Don't go up here on your head. 
dun, dun. But, all right, enough. let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah. All right. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, a popular Discord server from the Steam Deck has at least temporarily shut down its entire emulation channel, writing, quote, We are not equipped to deal with potential legal repercussions of, host, of oh. hosting discussions on Yuzu or emulation at this time, and apologizing for, quote, the need to censor. Jesus. Okay. Oh. That's way too. You don't yeah, have to. Yeah, we'll have to read that whole thing. There's a, lot of Joe, for there's a lot of Joe Biden shit. Okay. When I went looking for the Discord server for... Ryujinx. Another Nintendo Switch emulator, I found it was no longer accepting invites. The Verge and Artenica have all reached out to Ryujinx to come in on the Yuzu, but we haven't heard back yet. Ryujinx opened his Discord invites on the same day. Moderating there says that there were posts multiple times for thousands of refugees on the Yuzu oh Discord were pouring in. Wow. I'm telling you, they're just Oh, but yeah, the invites one. were currently paused for this one. server. And Please try again later. And the next one. <laughs> a the Ryujinx developer also developed, reportedly left the project following the Yuzu settlement, though they said that they would have already been mostly inactive on the project for the past year and a half due to the lack of motivation at the time. <laughs> Motivation. <laughs> Another second order effect without use on Citra, all in one emulation providers like the popular Emu Deck have to look elsewhere for underlying emulators. Emu Deck is falling back to Ryoji's for Nintendo emulation and testing both the 3DS instead of the Citra. Another big pile of information there. All right. If you yeah. see or hear any other repercussions, please reach out to me at sean at theverge.com. We'd like to explain if and how the scene might be changing. Don't. Oh, okay. Uh, add, the latest one. So, okay. Mark si uh, uh, March 6th added that the advice for the regions were temporarily paused. Uh, the, 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 let the projects do a settlement. And David, the bear, the pull the emulators down. Okay. okay. Here's the deal. Yeah. Do not reach out to any companies about this. Do not. The Verge, Kotaku, Polygon, they work for those companies. Yo-ho. They report. Shh for those companies if they know the names they make them public that becomes an issue the big problem here was that that one jackass leaked the game early which caused everything to go down i guarantee you if that never happened if the game just came out and then the emulator was done nintendo would not even care the fact that it was leaked early and basically cost them money that's the part that caused this entire thing to happen so that person is the one guilty there is hundreds of emulator sites out there i will not say a single name of any of them figure them out yourself it is important that we keep that alive. Yes, I know. There's people that will literally just pirate games because they don't want to pay for them. But there's also a shit ton more people that pirate games because they can't afford them, they cannot find them, and they're literally nowhere to be found. And sometimes you got to do it for the righteous reason. Because fuck the corpus, man. Exactly. YouTube will continue... I mean, Nintendo will continue Same to do its... thing when you think about it. All right. Nintendo will continue to do its business. They're never going to go away as long as the gears keep turning. They're going to continue to make millions and... Uh, I'm sorry, billions of dollars with their video game... Uh, with their video gaming enterprise. However... They're not going to be able to stop all the all, all, all the emulators out there all over the world that's running rampant. Okay, the march of progress. It's yeah, no, that is an impossible feat. That is too much, too many headaches, too much money to be spending on lawsuits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When you think about it, Mister Casabona, this actually brings back a hilarious case of what goes around comes around. As you folks know, the increasing digitization of entertainment has resulted in some really bad juju. Just recently, Sony released the demo for Stellar Blade on PS5, and then for no reason, they moved the license date forward, and that completely removed the demo. So if you download the demo and your PS5 is still connected to the internet, disconnect it immediately because the demo will disappear the second it does that. Yeah. So yeah, digitization means that companies can mess around with our titles a lot. However, it means that people who are knowledgeable in the ways of technology can obtain that information and the games can now get leaked hell of a lot earlier, specifically because everything has to be online. So it has become a bit of a double-edged sword in the case that it's, it's worse for the customer, but it has never been better for the pirate. Indeed. Yo-ho. Indeed. I mean, hey, man, when the, when the tea is getting taxed that high, I'm going to have to go somewhere else to get it. Exactly. And, folks, with that, we come to an end to this program, and we appreciate all of you tuning in tonight. You guys have been great. We had, uh, uh, I believe we had, uh, we didn't have any new faces, did we? Uh, uh, we well, we them. saw uh, that one dude on there. Well, there's, uh, let's see, we had uh, uh, Jokai35 coming back, uh, Moon Eye Dragon. No, there was just that one scan oh, the barcode scan the bar person. Just one, from okay, from, from Los Amigos Play. Well, but you know what? Right we got all of our uh, faithful followers and lo uh, loyal viewers over here. Yeah, Nintendo's notorious for suing people with poor English C and desist letters. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty bullshit. You're right, uh, Kyle Canada. Ultra uh, Instinct completely plays the more emulators pop up after Yuzu. Right. Yep. All right. Damn! So a couple um, of... First, no people know. All right, so I really only have one announce. Well, I have a few announcements to, to bring up before we close the program. Announcement number one, I want to repeat that, uh, yes, folks, this is a goal. If you help us get to 2,000 subscribers, 2K subscribers, I will do two things. Number one, <laughs> I will put out a dance video 
me cosplaying as Johnny Bravo. <laughs> Do the monkey. Yeah. And number two, I will officially retire these sunglasses from the channel. He's going to get bigger sunglasses. <laughs> Angel, yep. shut the yes. fuck up. No, 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 no! You have to, you have to get those really big, obnoxious. You really need to stop saying things. No, he doesn't. No, he needs to say more. Like the pixel, you need to get the big pixel ones. Real quick, I want to give a shout out over here to Kyle Canada in the chat because he has just become an interviewer. But yeah, I will retire these sunglasses and I will dance as Johnny Bravo if you get us to 2,000 subscribers. 2K subscribers and I will do both these things for all of you. Do it for the dance. The next announcement is that on the weekend of set of April 6th and April 7th next month, we will be hosting a two-night uh, WrestleMania watch party here on this channel. Nice. Uh, we'll be doing live streaming. Uh, to uh, uh, we'll be live streaming our reactions to Re uh, WWE's WrestleMania Night One, Night Two, which is on Saturday and Sunday, April six and seven, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, yeah, you get to watch us goof around while we're watching wrestling. For and the record, we're not going to be showing the wrestling. We can't because that's what this piracy thing was all about, yo ho. Um, but uh, we'll be watching it, and you can watch along with us if you've got Peacock or yo ho, uh, and you can um react along with us. We'll talk about the matches. We'll explain to those who may be neophytes in the world of pro wrestling who these people are, why they're fighting, why you should give a damn. But more importantly, we're just going to be basically ripping on the whole thing and having a yes, good time fucking around. From our boats. I know Angel. I know Angel's looking forward to seeing the entire faction of Damage Control. You of know, all course. those Japanese wrestlers. Listen, the I, am, I am always down from some ultraviolence. And when you put sexy with the ultraviolence, it reaches to the part of my brain way back over here that was created back when we still were walking on all fours and swinging clubs around and throwing our shit at people you know yesterday yeah it's very important it is very important because sex sells and violence sells and when you kind of combine those things together you get beautiful wrestling indeed also real quick uh genie rick's in the chat hey up genie rick welcome to the show uh we're wrapping up over here neuron activation hey, See, uh, thank you uh, you understand uh, all right monkey sees action so that's going to do it for the announcements. Now, Angel, we are going to be continue uh, our journey. Uh, our mission in Shadow Moses is far from over, right? That is correct. We may have managed to escape, but grave dangers await us. Like, you know, Liquid's piss cannon. Well, on the plus side, at least Liquid is dead, right? Yeah, we shot his ass down. He went down screaming because we obliterated his testicles. But, unfortunately, that is not the only dangers that await for us. That will be up to you to watch out and discover. As with Mr. Arouse at the helm, we will have another episode next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time of Los Amigos Play Metal Gear Solid 1 Twin Snacks. You are not yourself when you're hungry. In both YouTube and kick, And I God. hope that you will be there to see us enjoy the incredible dangers, the amazing adventures, the surprisingly soulful dialogue, and this man getting shot in the face way more times than is considered healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, for any wrestling fans out there, tune into my program, which is Wrestle Rewind, every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube and Kick, uh, where we review three of the most exciting professional wrestling programs in North America today. That is WWE's NXT, AEW Dynamite, and TNA uh, Wrestling's Impact. And on next week's edition, I will be reviewing the main event for this year's TNA pay-per-view event called TNA Sacrifice which happened last night, and I will give the full review on the main event for that. But before we get to that, Juan, we do have a program on Wednesday night, don't we? You're damn right we do, and that's my show, The Black Files, the uncensored and uncompromising interview and review podcast of the Raven's Flock. You can see here that we cover a whole myriad of different stories in the world of nerd pop culture on the Raven's Flock, but on The Black Files, we just zero in on one story, and we make it a deep cut. We go into it as a deep dive. Uh, just like we mentioned, uh, we're, the original story Wednesday night was supposed to be the Yuzu emulation lawsuit and all that mess. We had the thumbnail made up for it and everything, but with the news of Rooster Teeth being dissolved <laughs> and shutting down. That was breaking news. <laughs> uh, sorry, it, I just thought of a really funny joke. Oh my god, Angel. So you see, we, we like you, you can tell there's a the, you never know what actually happens in the world of nerd and pop culture. That's why uh, on the Black Files, uh, you can always count on us to cut in as deep as possible, and in order to and in order for us to get to uh, hopefully higher truths and hopefully uh, better understandings of how our entertainment is 
created for us and the sort of prices that we pay, not just money, but, you know, people's uh, mentalities, people's safety, uh, crazy shit happening. So you never know. Um, let me see. I, uh, uh, it's, uh, the Moon Knight Dragon was saying, I'm not gay, but Japanese men, <laughs> common writer. I woke up yeah. in uh, monkey noises. Hey, listen. Yes. They know what you activations. want. They know what I want. They common know. writer is special. Pretty boys. Yeah. Kamen and Rider Sentai. is special in that and Super Sentai. And Super Sentai. And Super Sentai. Mm-hmm. In general, Yummy. Japan knows what the public wants. That Pretty boys. It, it's kind of the reason why they're kicking Pretty the boys. other media's ass right now, let's be honest. Yes. And Captain make sure to, Marvelous! So right. make sure the to, wonderful space pirate! So make sure to request access as we go live every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time for my program, The Black Files. And of course, tune in to our main show, the number one show on our channel, The Raven's Flock, every Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube been kick where we the motley crew of nerds will be gathered here to talk with you on the latest news and topics circulating in the world of nerd and geek culture whether it's a slow week a busy week or even a dead week no matter how many lawsuits are thrown our way by multi uh, dollar uh, video gaming companies there's a Exactly. <laughs> There's always something to discuss, and we'll be here to share with each and every one of you. Beautiful. Now, once again, we appreciate all of you tuning in tonight, and you guys have been awesome in the live chat. Everything that we've been doing on this channel, from our shows, to simulcasting on different platforms, to our quarter annual subathons, to our watch parties, our, co- our con appearances, our interviews... Everything that we've been doing is all part of our determination from 2013 to make your, your voice our mission. mission. Now... With that being said, Juan, plug us away. Don't mind if I do. Folks, thank you very much for watching this week's live stream edition of The Raven's Flock. Hosted by Jose Casabona, Angel Mendes, Dragon Fan Cosplays, Anna Rose Cosplay, Case Room Cosplay, and yours truly, Juan Arouse, as we bring you the latest news in the world of geek culture, nerd culture, pop culture, and everything in between. Working hard and staying strong to make your voice our mission. Join us as we go live every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, at uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I was... Going with what we did with Wrestle Rewind and the Black Egg Files. Sorry about that. Okay. Join us as we go live every uh, Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, simulcasting on YouTube and Kick. Hit the subscribe and the follow button. Ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our content. Become an inner flocker by hitting the join button. And until next time, continue to follow us on... What though? That's the wrong button. <laughs> it's over. No, oh, you're good tonight. No, uh, uh, I'm getting cues. Uh, I'm getting cues here. Oh my God, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Continue to follow us on Facebook.com slash The Ravens Flock, Twitter.com slash Ravens Flock 13, Instagram.com slash The Ravens Flock Online, Kick.com slash The Ravens Flock, and of course, remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that tiny little notification bell right here on our flagship platform, YouTube.com slash The Ravens Flock, humble home of the Black Files, Los Amigos Play, Wrestle Rewind, and The Ravens Flock. Nice. All right, folks, thank you very much for tuning in to another exciting edition of our uh, flagship show. Nerds watching all over the internet, we are The Ravens Flock, and thank you very much, Mr. Akira Toriyama. You will be missed. <laughs>